Okay, recording. Uh, audio is good. That air conditioner is not coming in too strong. Hopefully not. Um, I don't know if I could live without an AC up here tonight. It is so hot. Okay. Um, sounds like it's it sounds like it's off. Good. That's what I want to hear. I love the sound of an air conditioner being off. All right, let's start the game and we'll see how that sounds. How's that sounding with my voice? Oh. Those two characters are going to be prominently featured in today's installment. Sound as good? Game audio is a bit loud. Let's see. If I turn down the volume in my headphones, oops, then I think that, well, we hope so. All right. So we last left our hero in the summertime and now we're in the fall. Music is louder than me. All right. Um, where am I turning that down? there I believe all right we'll see we'll see how it sounds when I start uh, when it starts playing music again okay so this is the beginning of fall we played through spring and summer last time uh, let's just let's just get into it <laughs> yes we are we are reliving those golden years of playing this video game <laughs> We're on break till the ferry is docked and ready. Don't be long, okay? Your mind flashes back to Paul, age 10, condemning you, eight, to hell for your people's crimes against Jesus Christ. Okay, I'll be back in 30 minutes. 29. Hey, Jackson. Sup, kid? How do you like the job so far? It's pretty easy. Kind of boring, though. I worked the tickets for three summers. I wrote songs in my head to keep my brain busy. Cool. Do you remember them? Nope. Completely wasted time. <laughs> hey, listen, can I ask you a favor? What is it? When you're on the mainland, can you tell Amanda something? Amanda who? Amanda Grazzi? You know, my stepsister. Amanda is your stepsister? How come I've never seen her here? Our parents just got married like less than a year ago. She's barely here because she spends all her time hanging out on the mainland. Anyway, can you tell her the rooster's in the pot? She'll know what it means. Amanda is one of those cool girls who talks to anyone, regardless of popularity. You really don't know her, though. You'd love any excuse to talk to her. Sure thing, I'll tell her. Thanks, Mara. Oh, and pay no mind to the company my sister keeps. She has weird-ass taste in friends. You can't possibly imagine what that means. The thought of having an array of friends to choose from is odd in itself. All right, let's go straight to, aha, I've got some vegetables. Not the peas, but I had accepted that. Using the sharpened end of your garden shovel, you carefully slice the squash fruit from the vine and take it with you. All right, way to go, Mara, you've grown your first squash. Yes, single save file. We are not coming back from this. <laughs> Yeah, no, the hoodie, the hoodie is very, very teen basics to me. How's work going? Fine, I'm just on break. Good. You know, I wasn't so sure at first, but I'm glad you took that job. There goes mom, acting like her opinion matters at all. You were going to do this no matter what she said. Do you want any food before you go back? Nah, I'll get something on the mainland when I get paid. Good. Don't forget to eat. Mara. Yeah? How long are you going to have your hair that way? What way? You know. Probably forever, or till they stop making manic panic. You reflect on the elegance and simplicity of dyeing one's hair. How it costs less than $10 to transform your appearance and piss off your mom. Alright, I shouldn't even be here yet. Uh, there's, there's 
there's some shit I gotta do. And I will show you the proper sequence for doing it. Grab this little fella on the ground. Yeah, the chucks too. Looks to be a 3.5 inch floppy disk buried in the sand. Its dingy appearance suggests it's been here a while. You dust it off and take it with you. Yeah, I guess we all thought we discovered Manic Panic, huh? Alright, so, the ideal thing to do with the disc is to put it in your computer and look at it. The monitor glows, a crisp fall greeting. Back to computers, woohoo! Nobody interesting is online. Lately, you appreciate these moments when you can sort of be alone on the internet. Ah, what should I do? All right, well, let's catch up on the forums. What should I do? You've largely fallen behind on the forums, which, weigh, which weighs each visit in a sense of dread. Still, most of what you see looks stale. New chapters of the same stories you were once really invested in. Now, catching up would be burdensome. Hmm, the male forum members are getting rowdy in a particularly unfunny nonsense thread. You reel at some of their comments. Don't these guys have anything better to do than act like jackasses online? Oh no, not Staggle too. I'd buy that for a dollar. You dash off a rash reply. I, I'd like to think that uh, Mara does not get that reference. Uh, scolding the boys for making this community a shittier place than it used to be. You hit post and close the window in a huff. You don't have time to wait for someone to see it. You break, your break from work is almost over. You feel a moment's regret for even wasting your time on this godforsaken forum. So now let's check out the disc. You decide to look inside the old worn out disc you found on the beach. Why the hell not? Maybe you'll find some treasure. It appears to be a list of text files. Some of them are sorted into subfolders. A few file names are grabbed, uh, are garbled and cannot be opened. You double click on a file called Plover Draft Chapter 4.txt, dated from 1998. You instantly regret burdening your computer with such a long text file. This appears to be dozens of pages long. Wait a minute, this is the chapter from the book Dance of the Piping Plo Plover by Mitchell Lovett. Given the file name and timestamp, long before the book's release, this disc has to belong to Mitch himself. You navigate up to the parent folder and open another, smaller text file. This one is poetry, a poem, in fact, that is familiar to you. Didn't Simon write this? Clicking on another file confirms your suspicion. It's a fragment of a short story written by Simon. So this must be Simon's disc. Or Mitch's? Maybe he and Mitch were sharing it. You have spotty luck opening much else on this disc. Unfortunately, some of the data has been lost. At any rate, it's a good thing you found this. It's full of material that is either rare or strictly protected by copyright. Um, all right, well, I'll work on my writing. Not much gonna get done there. <laughs> Did I dare my hair like this too? Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, I missed a little bit of that. Used to be able to do so much in 15 minutes, but today your mind is blank. Since you started your job and restarted school, it's hard to find those little bursts of energy. Beyond that, you're not sure you care about these characters anymore. You minimize your notepad window. Ooh, what a feeling. All right, we're done here. Now, before we go back to work, and I believe you, you might have one other chance to do this, but I'm just going to do it right now to ensure that later on, we can enter Simon's house when we need to. Are you okay? What a drudgery it all is. Every hour adding to the day's disappointment. So you're depressed again. When was I not? You seem pretty happy in the summer. Summer. It's already fading away. There was a suggestion, a shadow of happiness, but it's all gone now. 
Are you sad because Mitch is gone, gone again? No, I don't think so. Things would probably be worse if he was here, so I guess it's not all bad. Uh, that's the spirit? Your hair, how cute. Look at you, rebelling against biology. Alright, Simon needs his disc back. I thought maybe this belonged to you. Where did you find it? In the sand by the dunes. There's a lot of personal stuff on here. You didn't look, did you? Nope. It's already accepted. I had already accepted losing this. Now that it's back, I... I don't know if I'm happy or not. I was trying to move on from all this, you know? Sometimes I read stuff I wrote when I was 13 and it really embarrasses me. It's a little like that, sure. Thanks for bringing it back. Uh, do you want a dollar to buy yourself a snack or something? That isn't necessary. I'm an adult with a job now. Has your boss paid you yet? No, but take it. Simon gives you the soft, rumpled old dollar bill. Use it in good health. <laughs> uh, so since I did, I failed to buy the uh, markers from Daniel. Oh right, you your money resets no matter what. So I would still only have. Oh no, wait. Yes, no. I already have six dollars, which is the amount of money you need to go to the cafe and buy a cappuccino. So, um, if you hoard your money in this game, there's, there's no other use for it. So, uh, I'm going to have way too much. Back in the nick of time, Mara. Be careful. Aren't I supposed to be here in the nick of time? No, you're supposed to be early. Oh, okay. Back to work. Yeah, Simon does speak verbosely. It's true. He's kind of the real life version of, of the way Mara acts on, on the internet. I never thought of it that way, but it's true. They uh, they have that common ground there. All right. So uh, we still have our egg salad. Yes, our egg sandwich. Uh, Amanda? Yes. The uh, rooster's in the pot. Excuse me? Oh. Terrifying. Uh, this one, it does not matter what you say. Just, it's a joke! Huh? It's just this line I use on every person I meet. Depending on how they react, I can tell what kind of person they are. Okay, so what kind of person am I? You're inquisitive. Huh. Yeah, Amanda, sounds like you. Guys, this is Mara. We go to school together. Hey, I'm Robert. I'm Jason. We've... What did I do Jason's voice like? I'm probably not going to get it quite right again. I'm Jason. We've met before, right? I think so. Hi again. The pink's new, right? I like it. Uh, yeah, thanks. Me and Mara are neighbors now. You're going to have... I can give Amanda a little more of a voice than that. Me and Mara are neighbors now. You're going to have to show me around the island, you know. You're astonished at how familiar Amanda is being... It would take you weeks of friendly interactions to try and hang out with someone. And even then, you'd wait for an invitation. What are you doing tonight? You want to go to the house with us? I feel like all my voices are the same. Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, I need to collect my pay first. I work on the ferry and we're just finishing up. It's fine. We're still smoking. Yeah, woman. Get what's yours. Okay. I'll be right back. I promise. Okay. Remain calm. You've just been invited to hang out with Amanda and some boys. Your manager, Paul, is over by the dock entrance. Just collect your pay and hurry back. Everything will be okay. I love you. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Paul, can I have my pay for the week? Hmm? You don't get paid until next week. I don't? Nope. Every two weeks. But I need it tonight. Let me guess, is your family starving? Do you need life-saving surgery? No. 
Well, I've heard it all before. I'm in a shit mood for missing lunch. You'll be paid next week. Oh God, is Paul trying to sabotage your life right now? You feel totally helpless. Well, yeah, but there's something I can do. Yeah, Amanda's, Amanda's a good kid. She doesn't do anything, she's innocent. She don't do nothing wrong. You pull out the plain egg sandwich as fresh as the day you bought it on credit. You work so hard, want something to eat? Nothing weird in it. Just eggs. None of that salt and pepper shit is there. Absolutely not. I like, like, I thought it was funny for Mara and, uh, and Paul to have, like, common ground on this plain egg thing. Well, thanks a lot, Mara. My guts were really grumbling. Eh, any chance I could get some money? Hmm. Normally that would be impossible, but given your generous circumstances. Paul reaches into his back pocket and hands you a crinkled, slightly wet $5 bill. This almost accounts for one hour of work. That's an advance on your next paycheck, mind you. I can't pay you for the sandwich. It's against company policy. Got it. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> all right. Ready to go? All right, let's hit the road. Bye, Paul. Bye. Wanna sit up front, Mara? Uh, sure. Jason's car smells strongly of ashes, chemicals, and stale food. All right, ready for some crazy driving? Woo! -hoo! Crazy? Not bad driving, you know, just crazy. Oh. The scene is really not that much work on my part, I gotta say. I love that it. For the most part, it loops, um, and I think that's kind of thanks to the, uh, the 3D work of, uh, of John, the, uh, the sign maker who did all of our seasonal signs. We kind of went ape shit on this one. So yeah, I I animated the characters. I did not animate this car. I just sort of broke it up into its core assets and uh, worked it into a script. But. Uh, Boy, yeah, I was so happy with how it turned out. I get it! I see! Couch! Carla! Hey! <laughs> I think it's so funny the way Jason and Robert kind of pop into smaller pixels. I, uh... I make no apology for the, like, low res to slightly higher res transitions in this game, but yeah, there's just no other way I could see doing that. Wow, so this is the famous house. To your surprise, it's actually quite tame in here. You've had years to imagine the forbidden excess and depravity that must take place behind these walls. Corridors of smoke and noise, freely distributed alcohol and drugs, gyrating bodies under colored light. <laughs> like she pictures it's like fucking eyes wide shut. <laughs> it's a coffee shop, how about that? Hey Mara, what's up? Just saying hi. I was just about to order something at the counter. You want anything? You were actually hoping Amanda would introduce you to her other friends, but beggars can't be choosers. She hasn't changed her mind about wanting to hang out with you, at least. Sure, what do they have? The cappuccino is my favorite. It's so good. It's $6. Cappuccino Bambino. <laughs> Cute. It's $6. You hand over the $6. Goodbye, money. Be right back.
So now, this is one of those sort of, uh, I feel like this is one of those things that, uh, uh, people ding me for when it comes to game design. Uh, this one is actually a point for Jason. Uh, here's your drink. If you, uh, if you drink the cappuccino, you are more brave around Jason. You sip, you sip the cappuccino, trying hard to ignore the fact that you hate the taste of coffee. It's actually pretty good. Sweet, velvety, almost marshmallowy. You realize too late that you've finished the whole thing. With your finger, you search for the remaining bits of chocolate and cream, forgetting almost completely about Amanda. Uh, good? Yes. Cool beans! Almost immediately, you feel a novel vibration in your skull, equally distressing and euphoric. Since you kicked caffeinated soda over the summer, this is the hardest shot you've had in a while. Yeah, you have to get um, you have to get the money from your boss, and then you also have to get that dollar from Simon. Um, if you didn't spend money earlier in the game, then you just need the dollar from Simon or the money from your boss. But so now I have five dollars that I will not use for the rest of the game. Uh, all right, Mara, what's the deal with you? Huh? Nothing's wrong. No, I mean, what are you all about? What's your story? Oh, well, there's not much to tell, really. I mean, I'm just normal. Just some girl hanging out with you guys. I see. Shrouded in mystery. You're both heartened and disarmed by the thought that the boys know nothing about you. This is the clean slate you're always wishing for. A chance to make a cool impression. Every word and movement must be chosen with the utmost clarity and deliberation. Why are they playing the radio edit of Sonique's It Feels So Good? The extended mix is like a hundred times better. Great, great job, Mara. I'ma go smoking. <laughs> the mask. 1994. Damn, you moved too slow to ask Jason if you could bum a cigarette. You were hoping to set a precedent with this group. As far as they know, you don't even like to smoke. Crowd sucks tonight. Oh yeah, for sure. Sucky crowd. I've never seen you here before. Me and Jason are here like every other night. Me too. Maybe we both go every other night, but like on opposite nights. I love this. Uh, like I'm very proud of this little bit of logic she tries. Huh? Never mind. So I have a question. Yeah. Are you like a virgin or something? Oh, what do we think, guys? What do we think? Um, you can earn a little bit of affinity with Robert that does affect the story later, um, if you just be honest, so. At the moment, yes. At the moment? Are you about to run off and do it? Yeah, you know, it's just, sorry. You seem like a cool girl. Who's never had sex? No, 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 sorry, I... It's fine, I'm not offended. How long have you and Jason been friends? Oh, forever. Me and him are like brothers. I guess that explains it. You guys look completely different. I've never seen a punk hanging out with a... A what? A guy who dresses like Mace? Sorry? Eh, that's all right. I asked if you're a virgin after all. You can diss my style this one time. Okay. But never again. Okay. It's cool you came along, Mara. You're funny. Yeah, this is cool. Robert is, uh, a little sensitive and a little sad. There aren't a lot of opportunities to show it, but... Um, there is a little Robert affinity, um... Basically, well, we'll get to it, but uh, there's a there's an opportunity. There's a there's a point where Robert can either like take your side or not, and uh, that's the that's the difference. It's a very it's a very subtle difference. Hey, Mara, what's up? I'm having a great time. I just wanted you to know. Hey, <laughs> you sound pretty buzzed, Mara. All right, let's go outside. I, uh, 
uh, I showed like, like Mike kind of like looked over my shoulder at some point and uh, I, I was, I was working on a scene with this girl and I was like, this is the girl who, and Mike was like, yeah, no, I know who that girl is. <laughs> Just, uh, she's that girl. Hey kid, you got a whole party going out here. These losers, they're boring as shit, I can assure you. Can I bum a cigarette? Aw, you don't smoke, do you? What's wrong with that? You just seem like such a sweet girl. You don't want to get addicted to this shit. Maybe it's the burst of caffeine in your bloodstream, but you suddenly feel like you must insist. Maybe I'm not as sweet as you think I am. Ha, huh, all right then. I like you, Mara. You're easy to talk to. Really? I'm so shy, I just assume I come off as a weirdo. You feel shy around me? I don't know. I guess I'm pretty comfortable around you guys. What about just me? I'm cool with you. Good. You know, if we were alone, if we were alone, I'd... Should we see what Robert and Amanda are up to? Oh, for sure. They could be dead in a ditch by now. Let's go. Jason gets ahead of rejection very, very, very quickly. Did Jason try to make a move on you just now? You can't be sure, but it seems like he did. And did you really just grab that cigarette out of his pocket? I think uh, you can't really do anything, but you can feel bad. So you guys ever try the cappuccino? Nope, can't say I have. Oh, come to think of it, I've never tried anything here. Have you, Rob? Nope. No drinks, I mean. Or food. Right. Plenty of other things. Uh, stick with us, kid. You'll have fun. Alright. They're not dicks to you that time. I actually wanted to ask you something. Yeah? You know Lily Peters? Yeah? Did you and her ever have, like... Have what? A lesbian love affair? What? No! Sorry. <laughs> I know it's none of my business. We didn't. You don't have to tell me. I'm telling you, we didn't. Oh, okay. Why would you think that? From seeing us together? No, I just heard it. From who? I don't remember. Someone at school. Your face fills with hot blood. How long has this rumor been going around? And more importantly, does Lily know about it? Did this rumor coincide with Lily slowly distancing herself from you? Did Lily want to go away for the summer? Is this why she went? To get away from you? Was your argument just a convenient way for her to end things? Don't worry, Mara. I don't care either way. But it's a lie. I care if people are lying about me. You should take it as a compliment, girl. A fox like Lily. I bet you anything some scrubby guy who wishes he could date one of you started the rumor. Some scrubby guy. Good lord. Could it be... Fucking Justin? What? Fucking? Justin fucking McLaren. He came on to me. Did you know that? No. Yep. He tried to hook up with me behind the mall. He wanted me to like sit in his lap by the dumpsters. Ew. Obviously I told him to fuck off. Of course. And then he has the nerve to tell me not to tell anyone when he's spreading rumors about me. What a fucking loser. I bet he has a bent little dick. I bet he's never even kissed another human being. Yeah, probably not. Well, anyway, if I ever catch him bad you, I'll kick him in his tiny balls. Amanda walks over to some other kids, leaving you to ponder an endless timeline of screw-ups, missed opportunities, and your general status as a full-blown loser. Oh, man, just taking it that one step too far, Amanda. She didn't mean it. Oh. Feeling bad is my favorite. I mean, I feel like it's kind of my favorite, too. You just beat the game today. That's awesome. Congrats. I hope you enjoyed it. Hello to everyone who's come in. I haven't checked the chat too much, but I will try and keep up. And uh, 
Feel free to like ask me questions if you want to. I think I'm already safe. All right, let's get out of the coffee shop. Hmm, things are winding down, eh? What do you mean? I'm just getting started. <laughs> Mara, you sound wired. Do I? Is this what wired? Is this what wired means? You weirdo. We better get you home. Let's go home. Great. I'll rally the boys. They can drop you off at the station. What about you? I haven't decided yet. Oh, you know that feeling when you like know everyone else is gonna stay out. Your trip back to the mainland is a blur. Jason drives quickly but soberly, and you open a car door to the ferry. Before you say goodbye, a desperation to repeat this night overtakes you. You write your AOL screen name on a scrap of paper and give it to Robert. There's some talk about meeting up with Amanda on the island. Then Jason speeds off, and you're on the boat by yourself. You can't help but think that something new has begun. Could it be? Alright. Nothing to do but go home and I think have an argument online. Nothing to do but argue online. The monitor glows because Bob reading. You don't have any particular destination. You feel like you're just checking your computer out of nervousness. You start to wonder if this is making you feel bad to just go online with no reason at all. <laughs> you were feeling so good a minute ago and now there's a tickle of dread at the back of your neck. Mara! Ah! This is Jason with the blue hair. I'm on Robert's computer. Oh, hi. Smile. Hey. I saw your post. What are you guys up to? Just fucking around. Listen, I'm really confused about what I did to make you so mad. Can I tell you something? We were all just joking around, but obviously it did upset you. Yeah? And you're very important to me, so I'm sorry. You're so cute. I like that face of yours a lot. And I'd kiss you if I could. Are you there? Click. Wow, thanks. <laughs> oh, Mara strikes again. I'm just always uh, taking uh, taking an offer um, <laughs> with grace. <laughs> Your heart is pounding, so you didn't just imagine it. But can you really kiss Jason? The thought scares you. He's so rough, lean, sharp around the edges. There's nothing tender about him. Besides, if his pursuit is so aggressive, how rough is his actual touch? Would it hurt? No, it's just too real. In your mind, your first kiss is lighter than air. Hmm. So does she want her first kiss to be real or not? Um, this is something that like, you know, I kind of I kind of mentioned earlier that um, when she was smoking cigarettes, she had like this idea in her head that like it wouldn't hurt at all. There'd be no actual friction from smoking a cigarette. You wouldn't feel the heat of it. You wouldn't feel the pain of the heat. And uh, uh, in a similar way, she just kind of wants being with another person to not hurt and, uh, you know, thinks that believing that is going to make it so. Um, it's lighter than air, warm and ethereal. It can do you no harm. I'd really like to be friends. I don't know if I want more than that. That's okay. Just wanted to tell you. Can you imagine the confidence? So why you type that way? Type. Which way? Like you're writing a book, lol. Oop. Like I said, you know what Jason's asking. You didn't always bother to punctuate, capitalize, and spell check your online communications. In the early days, the late 90s, anything would go. As more people started to use the internet, you were suddenly privy to the everyday person's lack of writing comprehension, vocabulary to emote, or curiosity about language. You started to distinguish yourself from them, from the normal and the cruel, the idiots. So I think like, um, sorry, it doesn't bother me. I think, um, Mara is like 
blinking down on a lot of the holds and it never did that when I was playing through it. Um, I think that's either, uh, a, you know, a frame rate change because I'm recording or because I'm, uh, streaming or maybe because I'm playing it through steam, but I've never noticed that, that her eyes blink, um, on, uh, on blocking moments. Um, it's, uh, it's troubling me, but. I, I don't want us I don't want to start a change log at the same time. I'm just gonna allow the game to be what it is. What a night that was. You're still processing it. Now that Jason's told you how he feels, is it a bad idea to keep hanging out with him? Would you be leading him on? On the other hand, no one's ever complimented you so directly. It's an odd and pleasant discomfort to be looked at and admired. Your birthday is coming up. You're almost 16 and still bewildered by dating and relationships. Luckily, it's your day off. No work or school obligations. Just time to think it all through. A whole day stretches before you. I forget what's on here today. I think it's just a bunch of crap. Nobody interesting. Eighteen, you played the whole game in eighteen minutes. That is seriously impressive. Hi dear, how are you feeling today? God, it took. I mean, I would, I wouldn't speed run it. I would go through like looking for very specific things and making notes. But um, I never played it that fast. That's amazing. Oh fine, that's good. You're working so hard. I don't want you to hit a wall. You realize in an instant that mom thinks you worked the ferry until closing last night. She doesn't know you were out with friends. Talk about a freebie. Don't worry, I sleep well at night. Glad to hear. You know the Harvest Festival is today. Oh really? Are you going? I don't think so. Then why bring it up, mom? The Harvest Festival was a big event for dad, back when he was growing prize vegetables in the front yard. Now it's just one more seasonal reminder of his absence. I just wanted to tell you in case you wanted to go. It's downtown in the square as usual. All right. I just don't think it would be the same for me without your father. Probably not. Gotta go, Mom. It's the morning on your day off, and already Mom is trying to pull you into a hole of despair. Better find something to do and quick. Ah, what a feeling. A whole day off from the tireless work and study that grounds my life. Mm -hmm. Sure would be nice to play some video games. I agree, that would be nice for you. Hopefully someone can help you with that. Ah, look what we got here. Wait. There we go. With your shovel, you gently loosen the soil around the carrot patch. Then using your hands, you yank out each carrot by its top. Looks like you got eight crisp, plump carrots from this harvest. Nice work. Alrighty. I think, yeah, we can go back to Simon and, and just confirm that he got his disc. Oh, hey, Mara. What are you working on? This? Well. You know how you gave me back that disc? Uh-huh. There was something on there I'd all but completely abandoned, but I'm trying to restart it now. I think it would make a good book. All because of me? Come again? You're saying I've changed the course of your life just by returning your lost writing to you. I don't know about that. It all needs to be rewritten. But I've inspired you to pick it up again. Maybe. I was already thinking of doing it. Life's funny, isn't it? One small ripple can make a wave. Oh my god, you're so annoying. Wow, you've done your mitzvah for the day. Now that you believe, not that you believe in such things, being an atheist and all, but a good deed has undeniably been done. What's more, you got a dollar out of it. Mara, can you not just stand there and breathe? Christ, let me work. Would Mara be more of a Twitter person 
Tumblr person or 4chan person? I mean, that's that's really tough to say. Like, um, those things all exist in different eras, you know? So I think it really just depends on what age you are when those things hit. Um, I think I think she could easily have been all of those people. Uh, hi, Amanda. Hey, girl. You make it home at all right last night? Yep. How about you? I mean, I'm talking to you, so I guess you didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did miss the last ferry. Oh, no. My stepdad had to take his boat out to get me. My mom was so pissed. Oh, my God. It's my nightmare to get caught on the mainland after dark. I don't know what I'd do. Well, Robert offered to let me crash at his place, and I almost said yes, but... Well, you know, it seemed like a bad idea. Oh, I see. You're not really sure you see. It may be necessary to collect more data. I think Jason likes you. I know he does. He told me on I Am last night. <laughs> and, I don't know. He's cute. You think so? Maybe it's your fresh morning eyes or the fact that Amanda is offering her approval. But Jason does seem more cute today than he did the night before. This is undeniable. I actually invited the boys over tonight. Here? To Perfect Tides? Yeah, man. I told them we could set up camp on the beach. Are you in? Fuck yes! Great. Let's meet at the ferry station after dark. See you soon, Mara. Suddenly, you wish your precious day off would fly by. You want hours to melt away like seconds. What can you possibly occupy with that yourself with until later? I'll tell you what you can do. Do I think Jason seems cuter today than he did yesterday? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think he's adorable. He's exactly the kind of guy I would have fallen in love with when I was this age. Um, but I wouldn't have known it when I first saw him. And that's sort of the, uh, the magic kernel with a boy like Jason is uh, you don't know it right away. So, Mara, nothing much. Normally, you'd hang out and gab with Jackson, but since starting your job at the ferry, you're actually you're acutely aware of how annoying this can be. Well, see ya. Hi. Hey, Mrs. Peters. Kiddo, good to see you here. I was wondering if you'd come this year. You recognize the shift in Mrs. Peters' tone and expression. It's the same way everyone on the island talks to you when the conversation approaches matters of your father. Oh, I was supposed to read that line a bit different. Generally, you're relieved by people's sympathy. It gives you the wiggle room to say something potentially embarrassing without any danger of ridicule. But it also feels a little like a simulation of a real and challenging life. And at the present moment, you bristle. Well, I'm home from work and I just wanted to check it out real quick. Are you entering the competition then? All right, let's enter. You bet. Yeah, may as well. Great. I see you've got some lovely specimens there. Thanks. Each contestant can enter one kind of vegetable. Bring your entry over to the table where Jackson is setting up. Jackson's table. Got it. Hurry up. The competition is starting any minute now. All right. Um, so to answer questions that are often asked, um, you cannot win this contest. The best you can hope for is to place. Um, Chat skip, yes. <laughs> yeah, the ending the ending for Simon can be uh, pretty disappointing if you don't uh, find a way to make up with him. Alright. Uh, I want to enter the contest. Oh, word? I didn't know you grew. Yeah, I'm giving it a shot this year grow anything other than vegetables? Any kind of leaves? Uh, I'm just yanking your chain. Put the veg you want to enter on the table and I'll get it labeled for you. Things will get started in just a minute. Alright, so I'm going to enter my carrots. Not seeing any space on the table, you set your entry down in a bowl nearby. Um, so you do, you do get points, um, you get you get Mara points um, for entering the contest. You don't get game points, though. You're right, but you do get some affinity. 
All right, once everyone votes, I'll announce the winners. You feel a rapid beating in your temples as the judges pour over each entry. In your nervousness, it's hard to measure just how long they stare in silence. Um, you can also get Mara points if you uh, judge the contest well. Like if you don't have any vegetables or you don't enter, um, you can uh, you can judge uh, based on, like you can vote based on what you see in the vegetables. Feel a rapid beating in your temple uh, in your nervous system. It's hard to measure just how long this turn sounds. Somewhat comforting is the fact that the entries are blind, anonymous. Even if you turf out, you can pretty easily deny ever being part of the contest. In this way, the vegetable competition is not unlike the countless bulletin boards, chat rooms, and news groups you've deserted over the years. The votes are in, and the winner is... Gourds! And if you judge, um... You may become aware that uh, the jury is really stacked in favor of the gourds, even though they don't quite deserve it. And our runner-up, Butternut Squash! Your nerves shriek in dismay, but after another moment, you realize there's no way you could have won. You just don't have what it takes. Hey, kid. You entered? Uh, yeah. You get your point, um, you get your point from admitting that you entered. Yeah, the ugly carrots were mine. Really? You grew them yourself, huh? Yeah, I don't know. They came out sucky. <laughs> your dad didn't place first the first few times either. I wanted to win for him. Sure, I know. It takes a while. But what does he mean? Alright, uh, I think that's all you can do. That was great, kid. I hope you had fun. Yeah, I did. This was an awesome way to kill a few hours. Well, high compliments from our busy girl. <laughs> Alright. In time, the festival winds down. Events end, boots are packed away, and the crowd dissipates. With the, with the darkness, a gentle veil of gloom descends, quite by surprise you find the impermanence of the festival difficult to bear. Um, no, you cannot enter the peas that somebody else grew in, in the competition. Um, you may as well give them to Simon because otherwise they do go bad. Uh, you can give them to Daniel too, but it's better to give them to Simon because uh, Daniel will accept other treats. Sup, kid? What's up, guys? Just chilling in fucking paradise. Do you seriously live here? Yes, I've been here all my life. Dude, you're so lucky. So where can we buy beer? Nowhere. Everything's closed in the off season. What? There's one bar a little ways inland, but that's about it. Do you think they'd let us in? Robert has ID. Maybe, but the owner knows me. And he'll know you soon enough, Amanda. Shit. This small town living sucks, man. <laughs> Tough luck, you sots. Well, guess we'll have to make this last. Nice! You want Mara? Uh, this one's totally up to you. There, uh, It does not make any difference on the outcome in the game. Um, even, even with Jason there, uh, it does not impact him. Okay. The smell from the flask burns inside your nose before you even bring it to your mouth. This is your third taste of alcohol. Your dad let you sip his beer when you were 11. On New Year's Eve 99, after days spent begging, mom let you drink a flute of champagne on which you pretended to be drunk for the next two hours. <laughs> Tonight's experience is by far the most unpleasant. A sting quickens through your nasal passageways like an unwanted gulp of chlorine. Good. So where the hell are we going? What do you think, Mara? You're the island expert. Yeah, Mara, what's the cool shit to do around here? Well, uh, we could, um... Your eyes dart around wildly, wondering if the jig is up. Are they finally going to find out you have no social life and no idea what's fun to do? Come on, Mara. What's the most dangerous out there shit you've seen around here? Hurry up and flash those credentials. There's a, a woods where people have random sex. 
Okay. Are you saying we should all go to the woods and have sex? Random sex? Uh, no, I I'm just saying it's there. I've got an idea. There's a lot of rich people here in the summer, right? Well, who's protecting their shit the rest of the year? Technically police. Police with no cars. Uh, I really don't want to get in trouble with the neighbors, guys. I'm not talking about doing anything bad. I just want to take a look. A quick peek. It's not like those fucking Monopoly men are using them right now. Admittedly, you've had this fantasy for a while. There are things you'd kill to see up close where you're not so scared to look on your own. Well, okay, but it's your idea if anyone finds us. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take these off for just a second. It's getting a little, like, these headphones are great and all, but like, my whole head falls asleep when I put them on. Like, I didn't realize how much blood needs to circulate between like, you know, I don't know, from here to like the top of my head. It's a, uh, these, these have opened my eyes. How do you know someone else grew them? Well, you get them from uh, your neighbor, so. Uh, that's how you know. Okay. Back to it. Where's your hood up? I'm going incognito. It's really fucking cute. <laughs> Down to the pier. Now this is what I'm talking about. This one looks good. Good for what? For me. All aboard, ye scum. Uh... Come on, Mara. Mara, come steer the ship with me. You guys look comfy. No way, Mara. This shit's chafing my ass. You're crazy. This is pure luxury. We're fucking on a boat right now. Come again, Amanda? Yeah, what are we doing on a boat? Shut up, you guys! Lovely sea tonight. We're sailing at an even keel. Mara, which knob should I touch first? You better leave them alone. I don't want the owners to know we were... Eh. Jason! Hoo-hoo! Look how well it handles! Shit! Stop that! Just running some quick diagnostics. Full steam ahead! Beep, beep. Auga. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Grow up. What's wrong, island girl? You never handled a ship before? Nothing like this. Only a little dinghy. I've heard that before. <laughs> stop! Stop! Uh-oh. Oh. Mara, what do you say, Mara? Should we take a hint and get out of here? Nah, don't leave on our account. It's fine, guys. Stay. Yeah, let's beat it. You alright? Yep, I'm good. You're actually experiencing a bit of whiplash. You just trespassed on private property, saw Robert and Amanda making out, watched Jason pull his ass out of his pants, and agreed to go off alone with him. But there's a part of you that can't stop. You've walked through a door. and must see this through. So where do you normally take your hot dates? <laughs> I don't know. There's an abandoned hotel I can show you. Lead the way, ma'am. All right. There's a, there's a whole lot less puzzle solving in uh, this portion of the game. Uh, you really have to be in the right place at the right time. But I think that kind of, you know, for me, it kind of reflects 
where where she's at. Oh shit, how long has this been closed? Most of my life at least. Nobody wants to tear it down or rebuild it, so it just kind of rots here. Cool. How do you usually get in? And I've never gone inside before. You're kidding. You blush. It's as if you'd admitted something deeply personal. Well, no time like the present. Uh, look out. There's rusty nails everywhere. Jason, there could be an alarm system. I don't think so. There we go. Your eyes widen. You never thought breaking into the hotel could be so easy. You spent years tamping down your curiosity for what you assumed was a difficult, costly undertaking. It took Jason one second. Wow. I can't get over how good this island is. It's like nobody's fucking ruined it or anything. Ruined how? You know, like corrupted it with their cruel human bullshit. Do you think that's true? Yes, and I think it's beautiful. You deserve to go first. Here, take my hand. You can feel it in your bones. You are going to go inside the hotel and you and Jason are going to kiss. It's all so impossible seeming, yet suddenly so real. You've never felt so certain it's going to happen. Hey, who's back here? Shit! Quick, follow me. Oh, fuck, oh, fuck! Mara! Come out! I heard you, you little rats! Holy shit. The guy looked like a bruiser. Fuck, man, this is too much. I I'm in so much fucking trouble. I can't- I didn't want to fucking- You're fine. I promise. Come here. Though you recognize this is an effort to comfort, Jason's touch sends your nerves into hysteria. You hear his breath. You smell the coating of ash in his lungs. You feel the tug of leather against your skin and the cold brush of metal. Your blood pumps hot, frenetic. Now exhale, okay? Better? Yes. Let's go find the others. All right. Did we feel like this was going to happen? Like, was Mara just fooling herself? Did you feel like you were going to kiss Jason in that hotel? Is what I'm wondering. It begins to sink in just how far past your comfort zone you've pushed. You start to lose your nerve. Do Amanda and Robert plan to do drugs tonight? Or worse, go off again together? Is Jason going to somehow end up in your bedroom? You reason that you should probably put all your ahead. You thought it was. Is Jason fetishizing innocence with that statement? Well, maybe he is. I mean, he's, uh, he's certainly longing for something that he doesn't have in his life. Um, I think, you know, maybe that would be a, a, a less incriminating uh, uh, way to say the same thing. I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, like obviously, obviously it is uh, complicated and a little bit troubling the way he, the way he likes her, but we can't always control the way we like somebody, right? <laughs> so all hope may not be lost to see inside that hotel, but yeah, there's no way to do it with Jason. There you are. We thought you bailed, man. Just getting some air. So what should we do? I was actually going to call it a night. Oh, really? You feel a pang of regret for disappointing Jason. There is a version of this night that continues into danger, ecstasy, oblivion. But an invisible force pulls you home. You can't describe it. You just want it desperately. Sweet rest, relief from discomfort. Sorry, I promised my mom I'd be back. Boo! She's like a widow, so... Oh, shit. Oh, Mara, I'm sorry. 
It sucks, but whatever, right? Life sucks. Damn right. Good night, Mara. Let's hang soon, girl. Jason appears to be brooding silently on this new information. You wonder what he thinks of you now. In fact, you wonder th about this a lot in general. Before Dad died, you fantasized about a tragedy in your life that would endear you to others. You dreamt of having some excuse, some justification for the way you are in people's minds. Even now, you can't resist the temptation to look for a free pass. When you feel cornered, the story of your dead father comes out, and sometimes it does, in fact, give you exactly what you wished for. But the rest of the time, the news seems to further alienate you, give people even less to say to you, and in those times, you see the shallow exploitation of your father's name reflected back at you. Okay, night guys. <sighs> you feel like he just can't handle his energy like like Jason you mean I mean yes like I don't know that any 18 year old can handle their energy The monitor glows a crisp fall greeting. Ugh. Any thrill you took away from the night's events have sunken into the pit of your stomach. You are filled with disdain for yourself and resentment at anything that might cross your path. An eerie combination to take online. Dude, what's your problem? Neon Dragon has really been getting on your nerves. His latest story is in many ways a ripoff of your own style. It's just derivative and hacky writing in general. Despite this, the forum seems to eat up his every word. He's really shaped how many of your friends behave on the forum, including Staggle. Yes, he was the target of your latest post. He has no right, as a relative newcomer, to strut around like he does. I would ask the same of you. What gives you the right to talk that way? Okay, maybe we were getting a little stupid. But you used to be so nice. What happened to you? Lately, you're just unhappy and yelling at everyone. I'm not yelling, and I'm not unhappy. Things are actually going great in my life right now. Okay. Oof. I just think we should act like adults on here. So we're not allowed to have fun. Not what I said, but it's mainly a forum for writing. So goofing around with my friends is off limits. Christ, some of you act like you have no life offline. Oh, cool. The truth comes out. Please tell me again how popular you are, PT. I love to hear all about your real life friendships. Aren't you just so charitable for hanging out with us? Why don't you get a life and see for yourself how it is? You really think we're all losers, don't you? Do you think Staggle's a loser? Is that why he doesn't write anymore? It's true that Staggle has been posting less and less actual work since the end of summer. You never did respond to the poem he sent you, or anything else he posted around that time. You were just too embarrassed to look. Your cheeks flush, realizing there may be a connection. You're right, I do think you're a loser. Happy now? What a bitch you are. Bye. Later, bitch. Real creative insult, dude. Good night. Bye, bitch. Ugly virgin. At least I'm not a bitch. I'm going to bed. Enjoy being a loser online. <laughs> Enjoy being a biatch. Today is your birthday. Feel like shit. The night's regrets are continuing to pile on, layer by layer. But there's no time to sit paralyzed in bed or try to reconcile things online. You have school. Oh man. Like, God, the amount of time it took me to realize that, like, if you're in an argument with somebody, 
online you have lost like it took it took so long and like uh to be it just like to to just like you know see somebody at like arguments 101 like internet arguments 101 uh really kills me Mara makes two friends and thinks she knows everything about having a life online. <laughs> yeah. Makes friends once. All right. Let's see if I have any birthday emails. The monitor glows a crisp ball greeting. Ah, a happy birthday greeting from ebay.com. Your uncle in Florida forwarded you a digital birthday card as well. You have to scroll about 30 screen lengths to get to the substance of the message. It's a poem about getting older, watching your physical and mental faculties slip away, and pleasantly adjusting to that new reality. Below it is an image of a dog and a birthday hat, and the lyrics to the Beatles song, Birthday. <laughs> My son, like, uh, he's gotten really into CDs today, and uh, today, like, uh, in the last two weeks and he just like today he was like hey mom what do you think of this and he just like hit play and it was like da -da 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 -da, to say it's your birthday <laughs> that's about it you were sort of expecting and dreading a message from Staggle but he's not even online you don't actually know what you're doing today nobody has invited you to do anything and you've made no plans of your own well time for school the dreaded no plan birthday where you just kind of hoped somebody would into it that, you know, it's your birthday and you want to do something. My mom does. Happy birthday, dear. But you don't want mom to. How's it feel to be 16? I don't know. How's it supposed to feel? Well, it's a big year for a lot of people. Is there something a 16 year old is supposed to be doing? Not that I know of. <laughs> I meant more in terms of your education wrapping up. I kind of feel like I should have had a boyfriend by now. What about that boy online? You feel a heat in the back of your eyes. Suddenly mom is all right with Staggle? You suspect mom is becoming aware of your offline social life. All that internet stuff seems pretty tame now, eh mom? I think I'm interested in someone else in real life. What do you want to do tonight? We could go to Applebee's or somewhere else on the mainland. Great. Mom doesn't even have a plan for your birthday. Doesn't she care at all? Oh man, the narrator should really point out that mom did not acknowledge that line at all. This conversation is making you not even want to come home later. I haven't decided yet. I might go out with Amanda. Who's that? My friend. <laughs> oh my friend. Timothy wanted to wish you a happy birthday, too. I'm not sure if he's awake. Well, I have to leave right now. I'm not waiting for Timothy to wake up so he can wish me a happy birthday. <laughs> okay. Ugh. Awful. All right. What is the birthday bitch gonna get up to? Try and claim a present from Simon. You recognize Simon's handwriting. It looks like a note is for you. Dear Mara, congrats on surviving yet another year in a series of miserably bad years. I'm happy to inform you that 16 will be a markedly better year than 15, with each successive year following a similar trend. Things get a little dicey around 21 again, but that's for another note. Sorry I'll be missing your special day. I'm off to the mainland for what can only be described as a last-ditch effort. Keep me in your ever-expanding thoughts, Simon. Well, that takes hanging out with Simon off the table. Is this what happens when you've lived enough years? People just stop caring? Or is it you they've just stopped caring about? <laughs> oh, Mara, get over yourself. Who else can I get a happy birthday greeting out of? I believe uh, Lily's grandma will give me one. What's new, kid? Nothing much. It's my birthday today. 
Well, how about that? Happy birthday, kid. Thank you. Lily just turned 16, too. Your birthdays are only a week apart. Yeah, I know. All right, this is useful information. Uh, so those who watched the first stream will know that I screwed up and I did not get the markers uh, to make a cool sign with Lily and get on TV. So I'm hoping I can make it up to her by getting her a birthday present. You cringe at this small reminder of Lily. It dredges up memories of every birthday you've spent with her, every homemade gift you've exchanged, and the creeping reminder that Lily is also younger than most kids in your grade while still being older than you. You didn't acknowledge her birthday this year. Got anything planned today? Nah, I'm just playing it by ear. Well, aren't you a cool customer? Enjoy, kid. You exhale slowly, feeling the crush of this interaction. Maybe a small amount of birthday attention wasn't worth talking to Mrs. Peters. All right. Depression quickly creeping in. Let's get a happy birthday from Jackson. It is possible to get a good ending for Jackson, too. Morning, Mara. Morning. <laughs> Good morning. That's right. It's my birthday morning. Happy fucking birthday. Are you going to celebrate? Oh, yeah, for sure. You got plans for tonight? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Ah, all right, we'll have fun. Was Jackson just offering to hang out tonight? Would he have invited you to a party or something if you hadn't pretended to be busy? Shit. Whoopsie doodle. Oh, she's just striking out. Hey, girl. Feeling rested? Not really. You? Nope. Want to smoke? No, thanks. Aren't you worried about smoking out in the open? Why would I be? Someone might tell your parents and... <laughs> Are people really such snitches on the island? I don't know. Well, they can tell my parents whatever they want. I don't give a shit. Anyway, should we ride this river sticks to hell? Or the ferry? <laughs> yeah, Mara wants to go to Applebee's so bad and never sees the inside of an Applebee's in this game. Last night was really something, huh? Hmm? Oh yeah, it was fun. Uh, today's my birthday. Oh shit, happy birthday, lady. <laughs> Thank you. I wish I'd known earlier. I have plans tonight, but I'm sure you've got something fun lined up anyway. Uh, yeah. So listen, I'm probably not going to hang out with the boys for a while. What? Yeah. Did something bad happen? Oh no, nothing like that. It's just me and Robert. Yeah, you were pretty cozy last night. It's just not a good idea. Why not? If you like him and he likes you? Well, sure, if that's all there was to dating. I don't understand. You seem like such a cute couple. Believe me, Mara. I've known guys like Robert, and I know it wouldn't last. I'd rather not watch the whole thing blow up. It irritates you just a bit to hear Amanda being so dismissive about mutual attraction. It's as if she's waving in your face how easy she has it. Besides, I'm not looking for a boyfriend right now. I'm trying to figure out where to live after high school. Where do you think that'll be? Definitely not fucking here. Uh, sorry, no offense. It's nothing against the island. My stepdad is a fucking Nazi. It's cool. I want to leave the island and all its Nazis too. You try to imagine a more disappointing conversation and you can't. You thought you'd found a tight group, but with Amanda out, will the boys even want to see you? Is the whole thing just over? I'm gonna run ahead, okay? Have a good day, Mara. Okay, bye. All right. Well, Mara's really fucked this one up, but she can do one thing to make things right. It's my birthday today! Well then, happy birthday. Thanks. Sabrina and Joe have always given you a free candy bar on your birthday. In 10 straight years, you have never, ever forgotten to claim it. Well, take your pick. Nice! Without hesitation, you grab a crunch bar from the counter. They're not quite as good without that half melt of summer, but hey, you've learned to eat with the seasons. Hope you get everything you wish for. Me too! Alright, 
Mara. So I'm just going to real quick um, eat this thing and then load it up again because I just I love this line. You quickly scarf down your precious birthday treat, leaving only the tattered wrapper, which you promptly discard. After a brief and intense satisfaction, you're left with a vague feeling of remorse for so hastily squandering your candy delight. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. All right, that was fun. No, no, that's not the best thing to do with the candy. Uh, hey guys. Hey. Hi. Dean and Christina don't seem totally receptive to your presence. Ah, uh, oh boy. There are no good answers here, folks. Let's do them all. Apologize to Dean. Dean, I wanted to say sorry about the party. Uh, I was being a dumbass and I didn't mean to... What party was this? I have no idea what she's talking about. Listen, Mara, we're kind of having a private conversation, so... Nice one! So let's go for another. Today's my birthday! Cool, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Is that all? Yep. Great stuff, Mara! And the worst one of all. Are you ready for photography, Christina? Sorta. Of. I had a much bigger project in mind, but I ended up doing something smaller. But I still like it. Cool. What about you? Nah, I didn't do mine. At all? Why not? Don't you like the class? No, I like it. I just... Man, I really wanted to take that class. Don't you care about your grades, Mara? <laughs> not really. Don't your parents care? You feel a hot rush of embarrassment. You've, mis you've misjudged how much Dean and Christina like school. Well, fuck. Maybe I... Maybe I'd care about grades if school wasn't one constant humiliation. Maybe if people didn't dismiss me out of hand, if they didn't seek to mortify me at every turn, I'd prioritize my studies. Maybe if... I even had parents. Mom doesn't count. She doesn't give a shit about me. They push me to reach my potential, you fucking assholes. Fuck you, insensitive pricks. I don't know. All right, well, I'll see you inside, Mara. Why'd you go and say all that? Shut up. You're the one getting me in trouble. You never know what to say. I'm trying to help you. Oh, sure. You're helping. How convenient that you can say whatever you want and only my words have consequences. That's just how it works. Why don't you find some other bag of flesh to torture? Because you need me. Lately, I'm not so sure. I think maybe I'd be better off alone. But there's nowhere I can go. Sounds like you're the one who needs me. So how about you just lay off for now? Good. So this is the first of, I think two times that Mara's ego loses its cool and uh, and stops talking in the second person just briefly enough to you know have to pull itself pull herself back to that you feel a warm rush to your head as you look at the sweet shining birthday card card is from Lily. Her handwritten dedication is generic and to the point, with no mention of the friction between you. You exhale, sorrowful memories filling your head. Lily has long been the only one at school to acknowledge your birthday. Alright, um, so... Spoiler alert, there is no way to do this one well. What? I'm just gonna go for it. Did you start a rumor about me? Nope. Crap, you weren't counting on him denying it. Uh, are you sure? Yeah, Mara, I'm pretty sure I don't talk to anyone about you. Because there's a rumor going around and... You ask yourself what you're hoping to gain. Do you expect Justin to admit it and apologize? 
The best possible outcome would be to humiliate him in front of his friends with the story of his past at you. But to paint his desire as despicable would be an admission that you are despicable, that you strive for nothing more than this current wretched version of yourself. In a perfect world, these boys would like you, flirt with you in the hall, laugh at your wisecracks, ask what you're doing after class. In the back of your mind, there is still some way for them to like you, something you could say or do to meet them on their terms. Did you miss your one chance in the summertime in that alleyway? I don't know, what do we think? You can't believe it! It's Jason! Did you will him into existence by wishing with all your heart to see him? Let's find out. Hey you! Kid! You alright? You realize in your haste to talk to Jason that you didn't bother to compose yourself. After that run-in with Justin, your face must betray a state of distress. Oh, it's nothing. Uh, just some fucking asshole in there. Who? Hmm. So, if you really want uh, a little affinity from Jason, um, which, by the way, it will never be enough to make him your boyfriend, but um, you can you can get a slightly different outcome if you change the subject. If you tell him about Justin, um, you will regret it. Never mind. It's not a big deal. How are you? Uh, I've been better. Work fucking sucked today. Boss is a cunt. Where do you work? Auto shop just up the road. Whoa, do you like fix cars? Not for my check, but I've rehabbed a few clunkers in my time. Your vision hums with images of Jason covered in automated grease, clothes in tatters, barely reporting for a job where his skills are indispensable. Like, uh, Maggie the Mechanic. It seems impossible that a man whose time is in such high demand would want to spend it with you. You're ready to bargain and plead for every minute you can get. Anyway, I was hoping I'd see you. Your heart leaps. Oh, really? Yeah, I wanted to ask if you've seen Amanda. Uh, yeah. We took the ferry together this morning. Do you know if she's mad at Robert? Hmm, I wouldn't say mad. You feel whatever element had jumped up inside you slowly sinking back down, lower than where it had begun. I think she's worried, if anything. Things with Robert were going too fast. That's kind of what I figured. Well, I'll have to break the news to him, poor fucker. Aw, he'll be alright. He does this all the time. What's that? Oh, you know, he starts to think he has feelings for some chick just because they... Anyway, it's fine. I'll just take it easy with him tonight. Shoot the shit at his place. Watch a movie or something. You get the sense that Jason is, like, maybe, you know, one part uh, protecting Mara from uh, from the realities that she's not observing. Um, and on another, like, just trying to not make an impression as a crass womanizer. You sense the conversation is about to end, but you can't let that happen. You need Jason right now. Can I come? What, like, to Robert's house? Yeah. It's gonna be pretty fucking boring. I don't care. No, it won't. I wanna hang out with you. Well, alright then. Give me your arm. Jason, reaching into an unknown area of his pants, neither pocket nor waistband, and of indeterminate proximity to his groin, retrieves a permanent black marker. <laughs> it's not far from here. Just follow the sidewalk. For about a mile. Go straight up fourth. And you're there. Got it? 312 Beach. So from here, which way do I walk? That way! Got it. Great. See you tonight, gorgeous. <laughs> okay! Uh, I, uh, I should have followed that up with, like, Mara, like, echoing in her head the, the way that word sounded when she said it. So, I wonder if I can still buy the markers from Daniel. I think you can. Mara, right? What's up? Oh, nothing. Hey, do you like down the automator? What the what? You download MP3s, right? How good are you at tracking down bootlegs? I have my methods. 
See if you can find this one Beach Boys album. Smiley smile. They're all making crazy sounds. High as fuck. Really? The Beach Boys? Yep. Now this I've got it here. I guess I, I rewrote it so that you can't buy the, the markers anymore. This year, you begin every other studio uh, other school day with a studio photography elective. You have to admit, it makes going to school easier than it's ever been. This class is a double period, and the atmosphere is very laid back. Students come and go as they please, taking photos and gathering materials. For a high school class, you have an incredible amount of agency. Plus, no Justin or Fred this year. Hallelujah! That said, you're still pretty behind on work. You better sit down and figure out your tasks for the day. I like to think that this sleeping kid here has just like never been enrolled in any of these classes. He's just here. Oh, bless Soren for this little like fuck on the chair here. <laughs> so, so subtle. Oh, sorry. Do I know the Olivia Tremor control? Sure. Yeah, I was, I was super into that in the, I don't know, 2004, 2005. <laughs> yeah, tag yourself. I love that Olivia Tremor control song that has like a like, camera shutter in the song. It's like, na 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 na. <laughs> so good. All right, let's be a bad student. Good morning, everyone. How are we all feeling? A chorus of dry sing-songy fines fills the air. Fine. You have to admit, it's great to start your day in an elective studio art class with so few people. You wish all of school could be this way. You're also obviously way better suited to creative classes like this, as opposed to math and science. If only people understood that about you. This is somewhere you can thrive. So we're continuing our segment on photo development today. I trust that you all have your roll of film. Crap. You were assigned to buy a camera last month, but you didn't tell mom because you knew it was too expensive. Your plan was to try and borrow a camera from someone, which you never did, and then buy some film from the school store, which you didn't do because you didn't have a camera. Then your plan was to take photos around the island right before the assignment was due. This was all your plan until about five seconds ago. Mara, do you have your film? Uh, no, I don't have it. Why not? Where is it? At home. That doesn't do us much good, does it? No, it would be a lot better if it was here. I'm just as upset as you, frankly. <laughs> uh, at home. That, like, magical place where all of the stuff you've, like, worked so hard on is. Mrs. Duffy exhales audibly. Her sigh reminds you with great pain of your mother's. Well, you'll have to use something. Take a look through the drawers in the dark room. Maybe there's an abandoned roll you can develop. All right. You can all get started by pre-soaking your film. There's only two development tanks, so you'll have to take turns. The time we have isn't nearly enough for this kind of thing, but what does the school board care? Get to work. All right. So I'll take a look at my notebook. Ah, you remember now. You bought this notebook in January last year as part of a New Year's resolution to get more organized. Well, clearly that didn't work. This book is almost entirely empty. Oh, maybe we should get back into note-taking. This photo development guide is actually pr absolutely pristine. A lot of good it's doing it done in your locker. If only you had a project to justify all this knowledge. You haven't picked up a camera in ages. You close the book somberly, trying to steal yourself from the painful memories it, it inspires. Alright. Oops. I skipped right past all that. I got the I got the film. Alright. Hey, do you know how to develop film? What do you think I'm doing right now? Alright, I knew that. Can you help me? Sure. You just need to load the film onto a reel, put it in the development tank, and add your solution. Solution. Jeez, Mara, don't you ever take notes? I was just saying solution thoughtfully, just trying to remember where I wrote it down in my extensive collection of notes. <laughs> okay, well, good luck. Thanks! You find yourself longing for a world where Christina would be so friendly outside the photo lab, but you truly can't be picky. <laughs> like, that's friendly? 
place your film canister on the table. Right. I will need to reference this. All right. 60, 250. All right. Oh, what are we doing? It's distracted. All right, well, first, put it on the reel. Place the film in the developing tank. Set the timer and wait, gently agitating the developer's solution every now and then to keep the chemicals mixed. And carefully dispose of the liquid in your developing tank. All right. Uh, stop bath. 15, 330 seconds. Oh, the number of times I had to do this. You've done this a lot, trust me. And yet I still can't remember the formulas. liquid from the tank. Whether you've done your job right or not, this is the final step for your film. Aha! Success! You carefully separate your developed film from the reel. You hang your film strip on the drying line. Your work for the day is now complete. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if uh, I don't know if it's possible to take a film class like this anymore. But I'm glad I did. It was it was really rewarding to, you know, actually go through every every step of the process. The rest of the school day plays out at an imperceptible pace. You have even more trouble than usual paying attention. Every few minutes, your thoughts return to Jason, to the pivotal night ahead of you, and a tickle shoots through your chest. I gotta admit, while I was doing the photo development. I was thinking about Jason and like feeling anxiety, like, <laughs> oh shit, that's coming later. By day's end, your hopes have begun to sour. Your sense that the whole plan is falling, you sense that the whole plan is falling apart. It's as if time itself has resorted to slowing down, creating this final obstacle to your desires. To kill an hour, you return to the empty photo lab and examine your film. The photos are all similar, capturing tiny carefree slices of dad's life on the beach, mere seconds apart. Here, too, time lies frozen. You never imagined you'd be so confused at 16. It was all supposed to make sense by now. You were about to emerge from a dormant life. Your nerve wavers and returns. You have to do this. You must advance things. Find that next level. You've waited so long. Well, there's still some time before you have to walk over. So there's two things you can do here, um, and they really only exist because um, um, if you don't make friends with Daniel, he just won't have a conversation with you. But you can either uh, you can either talk to Daniel or you can talk to your teacher. I'm just gonna talk to Daniel. Hey Mara, what are you doing? Just killing time. Wanna sit with me? For some reason, I thought you were Jewish. Well, I am, but I don't believe in God. You can do that? Yeah, I just celebrate the holidays. Those are still fun. Right. Pay dirt. <laughs> yeah. My parents are really religious. It's so annoying. It's just cool to have someone to talk uh, talk about being an atheist with. Yeah, cool. <laughs> 
So what do you think it's like to die? What do you mean? Like, what does it feel like? It doesn't feel like anything. You're just dead. You can't feel, let alone compare one feeling to another. I mean, like, the act of dying. Do you think you can, like, feel your body shutting down? Do you think your brain's like, this is it? I'm dead? Jeez, I hope not. It would be nice to believe in heaven. And share in that whole fucking delusion? No thanks. We're, we're like Neo when he wakes up from the Matrix, Mara. Sure, there's nothing to eat here but gruel, but at least we're living. Is Daniel right? Is this living? Sometimes it feels as if your life has barely begun. That every creature around you has a better grasp of what it means to live. Before you know it, the sun has gone down. You figure it's about time to head over to Robert's. Where are you off to? I'm walking to a friend's house. Alright, keep it real. Thank you. You as well. Alright. As you walk, the well-lit suburban back streets, reality weaves into abstraction. You're here on a weekday night on your 16th birthday, headed to Robert's house. How did you come to know these boys? How can it be that they've taken on this role in your life? Is any of this real? Or is this whole thing another cruel joke? Are you just waiting for the other shoe to drop? Are you guys fucking ready for this? Ever so timidly, you rap on the door three times. Yes? You're both terrified and enthralled by the sight of the woman, whose hardened glance is nearly identical to Robert's. Even in her dressed down state, she is quite lovely, with an elaborate and pungent, but seemingly effortless application of makeup and hair products. I'm here to. Uh, is Robert here? Ah! Sorry. An equally powerful but muffled scream echoes back from another part of the house. He's in the basement, sweetie. Straight back this way. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hey, girl. What's up, guys? Oh, Mara's got a little drunken eye here. Uh, a lot of assets that I uh, I drew quite a while ago that I've sort of forgotten about. Just about to put the movie on. Oh, my God, your head. Huh? What about it? Nothing. Dude, is there something wrong with my head? I'm sorry. I've, I've just never seen it without a hat before. It? What? What it do you mean? Your weird, ugly head, dude. Holy shit, calm down. All right. Um, so one affinity point for Robert, if you ask him how he's doing. Sup? Hey, Mara. You feeling okay? Sure. Why? Uh, well, it kind of seems like you and Amanda were... Uh, yeah, that. Whatever. I don't know, man. Girls say they want something and then they fucking... I don't know. I don't know the details or anything. You're better off. Well, I hope you feel better. Thanks, Mara. You can take Robert's remote. Hey, Robert, does this controller do anything? Nobody's used that thing in forever. I don't even remember what it was for. Do you mind if I take it? Why? No reason. Just want to see if I can do anything with it. You're a weird chick, Mara. Help yourself. You eagerly pick up the VCR remote. Who knows what doors it may open in your life? The possibilities are truly endless. There's one thing you can do with it. <laughs> yeah, pretty, uh, pretty spot on uh, Long Island basement from Soren. Um, I, uh, I, I, I feel very, uh, very accomplished in this collab. Hey kid. Hi Jason. What'd you do today? <laughs> Nothing much. Actually today's like my birthday. It is. What? It's your birthday? Yeah. Shouldn't you be out partying somewhere? Why the hell are you here? Um. Now I believe if you want 
if you want Jason's affinity, this number three is the best answer. This is actually really fun for me. It's the most honest answer, right? What? Really? <laughs> I know how lame that sounds. The truth, the truth is I'm kind of a loser. Hey, that's the birthday girl you're talking about. I won't have such slander in my friend's mom's house. Slander? I hardly know her. Huh, you guys. All right. Enough lollygagging. Let's get on that fucking couch. The couch is decades worn. Every inch is soft as an overloved toy. Though you've never touched it, it feels familiar and safe. Jason is uncharacteristically dressed down to his bare arms. For once you can feel a heat coming off of his body, even at this distance. You ever see this? The movie is Galaxy Quest, starring Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, and Alan Rickman. The trailer looked pretty stupid to you, and you paid it no mind in theaters. I think I remember the film. It's fucking hilarious, you guys. I've watched it like 50 times already. It came out like two weeks ago, you psycho. You know, like, uh, part of, uh, part of growing up for me and understanding people and how they don't have the upper hand on me, like I was so certain they were at some point, um, was realizing that even the most normal ass guy is like obsessed with some stupid obscure movie and, uh, is thought to be a weirdo, um, in some contexts. Um, it is a very good movie. Uh, like years later, I would realize that, but in the year 2000, I think you were kind of a freak if you, uh, if you had any appreciation for this thing. Sorry, Mara, this movie probably sucks. He has no idea what sucks and what doesn't suck, Mara. He's mentally damaged. You resist the urge to tell the boys how happy you are just to be here. And what a relief it was to be invited. Mom, turn out the light. Thank you, Mrs. F. Jason and Robert are your closest friends. I love, I love this track by Daniel. It's, uh, it's just, uh, the texture of it is so wonderful, especially with headphones. You don't know a whole lot about them and you don't quite understand what they see in you, but the feeling is undeniable. Whatever their reasons, they happily accept you. You want Doritos? No thanks. You figure if you're going to kiss Jason here on this couch, you want to have as much control over your mouth environment as possible. Besides, you're not that comfortable eating in front of the boys. Not yet. I like that Jason just pulls those Doritos out of like nowhere. The tingle in your stomach has started fanning out into other parts of your body, creating a mess of quaking, twisted nerves. Over minutes, it produces a tremor in your fingertips, which in turn sends a coldness through your arms, neck, and jaw. You all right, kid? Oh yeah, just trying to figure out who that actor is. That guy? Tony Shaloub. Tony the Lube. Shaloub. It's an actor. That's his fucking name. My dad redid his bathroom. His dad hangs some drywall and that makes him an expert. God, man, fuck you. Fuck your mother. Not really, though. Your mom's cool. Shut up. You find it very difficult to follow the movie and hide your discomfort at the same time. It's as if every frame of the movie is a set piece for the bigger story of your life. Maybe there's still time to put the brakes on this. It's not a foregone conclusion, right? You have a choice here. You can just sit calmly and enjoy Jason's company. You don't have to kiss. No, it's far too late for that. The room is enveloping you. You're unraveling into your base particles, charged and spinning. So sorry. Mara? F fuck, I, I can't talk. I I'm sorry, I don't know what, what... That better? I, I think so. Th thank you. Jason didn't already suspect how inexperienced you are. He certainly knows it now. This leads you to the question of what exactly he wants, a question you haven't been able to shake since you met him. 
Did Jason leave you here? Did you have any choice? Were your options whittled down to the fine point of an arrow? What do we think, folks? Because, uh, I've heard some pretty split opinions on that. Is this all just another act of humiliation? Being drawn into his capture, giving yourself over, only to find you disgust him? Or was this all you? Are you here because you wanted it more than anything you've ever wanted? And at long last, you're too stupid, too unbelonging, too cowardly to see it through. Better? <laughs> yeah. Now that the threshold has been crossed, you feel you can really appreciate the narrative structure of the movie. <laughs> you figure watching this would be a lot more fun if you knew more about the Star Trek series, beyond vague context clues you've seen online. Maybe you'll start getting into it. <laughs> Shit's so dumb. Um, maybe you'll start getting into it, downloading old episodes on peer-to-peer, -peer, or renting the videos. Then you can revisit this movie the way it's meant to be seen. You getting any of this? No. Can we kiss again? Hope it wasn't too boring in there. No. You hesitate to say it's been the greatest night of your life, even if it has only because it might make Jason uncomfortable. Your senses pulse with every change in the air. Every touch is like the lighting of a fuse. Are you sure? If I'd known it was your birthday... I want to do this again. How about Friday? Friday. A real weekend night with Jason. That's a big deal, isn't it? That is, you've hung out on the weekend before, but not in this newfound capacity. Never like this. You feel the pieces sliding around in your brain, locking into place, cool and involuntary, a process distinct from logical thought. Yes, Friday! You're gonna love 16. The whole fucking world is at your fingertips. But you don't want the world. You only want to belong to Jason. Too late. You already do. Like, school should just be fucking canceled, right? Like, she should not have to go. <laughs> one must study before one can truly appreciate Galaxy Quest. Jason doesn't strike me as a guy who really knows how to manipulate girls. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, I obviously have quite a few thoughts on it. Um, it's, it's interesting to me the way people see Mara being 16 as innocent, um, but they don't assign the same innocence to Jason. Um, like those two years, I mean, obviously two years do make a difference, but um, how much of a difference? A lot to her, but to somebody who's past all that, I don't know. Uh, hey. You struggle to find the words to talk to Lily. For so long, you've leaned on her to know what is appropriate. Do you want to talk or not? Um, so I think you can actually lose a point if you be this bitch. Why exactly are we fighting again? Because you got mad that I was moving. Because you decided to move without telling me? I was telling you then, Mara. You weren't giving me any time to deal with it. You were just like, bye, that's the deal. Well, it isn't the deal anymore, at least not for another year or two. So can we please just get along till then? So Lily's family is still planning to move. We just can't be sure when. All right, but are you sure you still wanna, want me in your life? Oh, stop it. So I kissed someone last night. Really? Who? 
You don't know him, I don't think. He doesn't go to our school. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, that's... I, I think that's a good point, and, like, I, I don't fault people for that, you know, for that feeling. I, you know, I think people bring their own heavy hand to, uh, you know, a lot of the fiction that they... Uh, they read and, and, and watch, but um, it's true that as a 16 year old, like as as the character that you're playing in the game, um, you see him as knowing quite a bit more than you and like inevitably um, taking advantage of how much more he knows than you do. understanding your friends who reminded you of Mara. That's interesting. Like, I, uh, like, I do hear from people who say, like, this, this person's not like my, my teen life was at all. Um, so I always wonder, like, you know, I mean, there are clearly, like, themes and ideas that are ubiquitous enough. Um, but I, I do wonder where people find that connection, if not, like, feeling personally connected to the character. I'm gonna take these off for a minute. This is too much, man. Ugh, get, get my head back. <laughs> okay. I think at this rate, I'm probably not gonna finish the whole game tonight. That's uh, that's my feeling. But I'll get as far as I can. I mean, I'm definitely gonna finish fall. Yeah, I mean, Jason is years ahead of Mara. He's, he's got, like, you know, a lot of stuff figured out that she doesn't have figured out. But, like, I don't know. If I remember myself as an 18-year-old and, like, you know, claim that I was anything like an adult, like, that would absolutely not be true. Um, but, uh, there's another, there's another angle of Jason that I, I haven't actually seen anybody consider out loud, but I'll get to it later. Um, but you know, pertaining to like what he thinks his responsibility is with her basically. Or any school at all, maybe? I'm not sure. You're not sure if the guy you kissed goes to school? Look, the important part is I'm no longer a kiss virgin. Is he cute? I think so. You sound a little defensive. He's cute, okay? Maybe not by your standards. Uh-oh. Is he a computer nerd? Nope, he doesn't even have a computer. Is he a raver? No, not his scene at all. Weed dealer? He doesn't do drugs or drink, but like, in a cool way. Oh, you kissed a pun. Jeez, you're good at this. Aw, Mara, that's cute. Do you like him? Yeah, I kind of like him a lot. Oh. As eager as you were to tell Lily about this, you knew this would happen. She would inevitably see any romance in your life as quaint, childish, naive. Well, I'm glad you've been having fun. Let's hang out on the island soon, okay? Okay. All right, so uh, here's where you can get a crucial Lily point, which I'm hoping is gonna save us. What's this for? I know it's like a week late, but happy birthday. Aw, Mara! And thanks for the card on my locker. That was really big of you, considering how I've been pretending to hate your guts and all. You've been pretending to hate my guts? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I can't wait to stealth eat this entire crunch bar during global studies. Thanks, girl. Don't mention it. See you later. Alright. stand frozen in your tracks. What the hell is Timothy doing here? Oh no, 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 no. He's come with bad news. She's dead. Your mother is dead. Or maybe one of your grandparents has been in an accident. No, he'd wait until you got home for that. It must be mom. 
Your dreamy little day is overtaken by despair. It serves you right, you wager, forever trying to push past the gloom. You're forever cursed to repeat this loss any time the threat of happiness emerges until you have nothing left. Mom, Mom, why did it have to be Mom? Does this make you an orphan? Is Timothy your new legal guardian? Picking his nose. No wonder, uh, you wonder how Jason will react to this. Would you blame him if he stopped seeing you completely? He never should have captured the heart of someone so cursed. Who in their right mind would invite such a walking tragedy into their lives? You stand paralyzed, briefly considering that you don't need to speak to Timothy and learn what's happened. If you just walk away before he sees you, you can suspend reality and mom's life indefinitely. So, um, there's a bit of a, there's a little line there if you go back to Lily. Are you okay? I don't know. What happened? I don't know yet. Either everything is fine or everything is ruined. Or maybe both are true. You mean like Schrodinger's cat? Huh? You'd know what I was talking about if you were still in advanced science, Mara. We've been talking about it in physics all week. I hate all that useless shit. It sounds to me like it's pretty relevant to your life. Good luck with your paradox. I didn't see you yesterday. Happy birthday. Jesus, you scared the living shit out of me. What are you doing here? Running errands. Mom's got a cold. Okay, why were you waiting for me? I wanted to ask you about something. What? Billy said he saw you go off with some punks from the mainland the other night. Where? By the docks. You have no memory of this? Oh, well, Amanda invited those guys. You know, Jackson's sister? I've heard Amanda is wild, and she hangs out with some real dirtbags. First of all, that's not true. Amanda's like the most laid-back person ever. And second, they're not dirtbags. So you've been hanging out with them. What do you care who I'm hanging out with? I'm worried about- I'm worried they'll be a bad influence. They're my fucking friends. Why do you get worried the minute I have friends? Timothy is silent, formulating his next words with great strain. They're older boys. You think they don't have something in mind when they hang out with you? No, I don't. Tell me, what do they have in mind, Timothy? You think they want to stop? Timothy's face flushes red, clearly mortified to have the question turned back on him, a question he had such difficulty asking in the first place. Look, just be careful, okay? And don't let it get the way in the way of your obligations. I am careful, and I only see them in my free time, after school and work. And not during Sukkot, right? What? The first night of Sukkot is on Friday. We'll be keeping the Sabbath. Since when? Since biblical times, and probably much longer. No, you fucking... Since when do we celebrate Sukkot? The holiday no one cares about. Even more useless than Purim. You have to be joking. Mara, now that Dad's gone, it's up to me to keep our Jewish heritage alive. This year, we are honoring our tradition and abstaining from work. Well, I made plans on Friday night before I knew that. Besides, hanging out isn't work. You're not seeing those boys on Friday. Yes, I am! I don't even fucking believe in God! I'm an atheist! You're part of a lineage that struggled for survival so you could be alive right now. Don't you care? That has nothing to do with a stupid holiday that means absolutely nothing to me. You're staying in tomorrow night. Fuck you. Mom agrees with me. F fuck you! I hate you so much! One day you'll thank me. One day I'll get out of here and never see you again! Sukkot. 
Sorry, your mom's dead, but she doesn't count as a parent anyway. <laughs> Is sh oh, Schrodinger just cat mentioned in every visual novel? I mean, that makes perfect sense. Oh, man, you're so right. Timothy is always abstaining from work. All right. Here we go, baby. Life has played its cruelest trick on you thus far. Sealed away in your tower. You ponder every wasted minute without Jason. Your remorseless captors, your so-called family, lie just beyond the door. The muted sounds of their voices nauseate you. How could anyone do this to you out of love? All right. Let's do what I always do when I'm most mad. You're so dispirited. What kind of day on the computer can possibly compare to kissing Jason? Mara! It's Robert. Jason's here too. The boys. What a relief it is to hear from them. Unfortunately, you're going to have to tell them you're under house arrest this weekend. Hey guys. It turns out I can't hang out tonight. Why? Frown. It's a long story, but basically I'm Jewish. Oh, is it a fucking holiday? Shut shit, lol. Yeah, it is shoddy. <laughs> what if we come to you? Now that's intriguing. There's no reason in Timothy's holy book that the boys can't visit, especially before sundown. Besides, once they're here, who in your family is going to be bold enough to kick them out? Is that still illegal or... Oh my god, can you? Why the fuck not? What's your address? 15 Sunwalk, just up from the wagon depot. Okay, see you soon. Okay, smile. So the boys are coming here then. You better get ready, huh? Or at least pass the time meaningfully and inconspicuously until they show up. Hi, dear. Hi, dear. Hey, guys. Enjoying some peace and quiet on the Sabbath? I'd still really like to go out. Well, it's only natural to want to indulge our base wishes. You can use this time to reflect on that. Wow. Enough of your sarcasm, Mara. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about something. Can you follow me into the into my room? Oh, sure. without turning back toward you. In here, you see it again. You see it all. But you saw nothing. You were at school that day. You only have your guesses and the great chasm the cosmic floor that dropped out from under you, the deep, impossible truth that he is gone. Mom is standing in the bedroom, eerily, guy from the Blair Witch Project 1999-like, with her back to you. I was really hoping to get you something nice for your birthday this year. That's all right, Mom. Well, I wanted to, and I'm going to make it up to you eventually. But in the meantime, I brought your father's guitar into town the other day. A very nice man at Guitar Center set up the neck and replaced the strings. For real? He says it's as good as new. Is this for me? Well, yes, as long as you never leave the house with it. It's very sentimental to me, as you know. Yeah, I know. But I can keep it in my room? Timothy might not like that. He's literally never played guitar before, Mom. Your father wanted him to learn. Well, I want to learn. Is this a gift for me or not? 
All right, all right. You can have it in your room. Woohoo! Wow, Dad's guitar from the 70s. You've got the chills just thinking about playing it. You'd have preferred an electric guitar, of course, but power chords are easy enough to practice on. You'll just have to save up for your electric in the meantime. I love, like, Mara just has a plan for being a rock star. Like, everyone has a plan for it. Yo, Mara! What? Hey, hey! How did you guys... Well, the window was unlocked. We just thought that would be easiest. You know, I guess it is. In hindsight, you're not sure how exactly you expected to get Jason and Robert into the house. This really is perfect. What's up? How's your uh, Jewish thing? Awful! My family is torturing me. I like your room, Mara. Very spacious. Thanks. I don't use most of it, and a lot of this stuff is old and I don't like it anymore. <laughs> you have any games on this on here? What's in all these folders? Nothing. D don't click those. I have Minesweeper. So I think you can do this anytime, and it'll get you a it'll get you a little affinity from Robert. And it's the only thing you can do with this. For me? Thanks! At breakneck speed, Robert downs the entire contents of the beer bottle you've been holding for months before hastily chucking the bottle away. His cheeks inflate with a belch. A little warm. Got any more? No, just the one. Oh. <laughs> and that's that. So they got you in lockdown, huh? Yes, I'm dying. Well, what do you want to do? You want to put your arms around Jason's neck and kiss for a really long time? I don't know. What do you want to do? Eh, nothing. Whatever you want. Cool. <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot to use the remote control. Well, there was a chance to use it. I, uh, did not. Uh, you get a little point for yourself, but it's not the end of the world. Is that yours? Yeah, I kind of just got it. That's an old guitar. What do you like to play? I'm not good yet. I only know a few chords. Play something. All right. Um, so the best you can do here uh, for affinity is to play the intro from No Scrubs because Basket Case and Everlong are two uh, sort of pitiful attempts to uh, get Jason's attention. You're not great at plucking individual strings, but for one of your favorite songs, you can mostly hack it. You play the well-practiced E minor A, minor 7, C, and B7 progression with minimal buzzing. What's that? Your heart sinks. That's the best you've ever played it. No scrubs? TLC? Forget it, Mara. If it came out after 1985, he's never heard it. I tried to like new shit, but it all sucks. What do you want from me? No, new music sucks. I agree with Jason. You do? Yeah, it's mostly corporate junk, written by the same three guys, sold to teens by the same record labels. But I still like it. Uh-huh. It exists all around me like a soundtrack, you know? In weird ways, it kind of describes my life. But the songs are shallow. What do they have to do with real life? I don't know. I guess nothing. It's more like I want them to be real life. They make good things feel endless, like a box of fries that's more than half full, or diving into a cold, deep pool on a hot day. I want to bury myself in that. I don't know. I can't explain it any better. Is that stupid? No, not at all. I think I get it. That's cool. Here, can you try this one? A, G, D, C. Let me see. Yeah, no, I'm forgetting quite a few little details. Like that? Yeah, keep going. Oh, and I want to wear the to control. Oh, you know this one. Only because Sublime covered it in their seminal 1992 debut, 40 Ounce to Freedom. But Jason doesn't need that information. They might as well the same, and the cocker was their goal. They built great empire, slaughtered some kind, and died of confused man, killed himself with his mind. Let's go!
You're so cool. I'm really not. You have no idea. You're cool because I said so. All right. Hey, I think I see an actual face in there. It's not my strongest asset. What's your strongest asset? My creativity, I guess. My brain. I'm smarter than I am pretty. Says who? I don't know. Who said that about you? I'll kill them. It might have been me. Gotta kill you then. I'd rather be smart than pretty anyway, wouldn't you? I don't know. I'm an ugly dumbass. They used to put me on the short bus to school. You're not ugly. You're like so adorable. Aww. And you don't have to get good grades to be smart. I was in advanced classes for a few years, and actually a lot of those people are really stupid. Well, we agree on that. School is a waste of time. I don't know if it's a waste. Everything I ever wanted to do, school was just a distraction from that. We've got way too little time on Earth. I just want to enjoy life, you know? Mara, your internet doesn't work. I keep getting kicked off. Oh, don't try too many times. My brother is probably... Ugh. Chills. What? Why do you keep trying to disconnect me? I didn't know you were on. Sorry. You shouldn't even be online right now. Why are you online then? Mom asked me to download something for her. Who made this guy king shit? Shh. I won't do it again. Unintelligible mumbling. Can we go hang out somewhere? Ah, uh, sure. God, it is like the things I'm glad I didn't get addicted to when I was a teenager. There's just no impulse control at all. Getting cold. What should we do next? It is pretty cold. My family's gonna kill me for sneaking out either way, so I may as well stay out. Anywhere indoors we can go? I don't know. What about a friend's house? Hmm. Alright. How are we doing here? Almost 11. Yeah, I think we're only going to get to this chapter tonight. If I started the next one, it would take until like well after midnight to finish. Right, so the thing you can do with the remote is... Um, in the small window between uh, 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 your mom inviting you into the bedroom and when you go into the bedroom, you can um, you can switch on the TV for Timothy and uh, really uh, really piss him off. But he doesn't know it's you. He doesn't catch you doing it. So it's just a little prank you can play on your brother. Yeah, Robert's uh, Robert's the third wheel. It's uh, it's kind of a bummer, but I guess uh, Mara and Jason were took that role on another night. Okay, um, pretty sure the only thing you can do is go in the house. I'm just trying to remember. Do I have anything else I can accomplish? No, that's that. Hi. Uh, hi Simon. Is it alright if we visit? It's cold and we have nothing to do. Who are these guys? And this is my friend Robert. Yo. And this is my, uh... I'm her friend Jason. Yeah, they're both my friends. Cool. It's nice to actually meet your friends. Dude, what do you do for a living? I'm a writer. Please don't touch anything. Wasn't gonna. How the fuck do you live in this house? Yeah, this is insane, man. I get by. Can I offer anyone a drink? No, thanks. You have beer? Yep. How about you, Mara? Uh, once again, no bearing. Just up to you. Yeah, I'll have one. Oh, okay. Shit, I didn't expect you to say yes. Don't 
Don't make me regret this, Mara. You get one drink and it's only because you just had a birthday. Cool. You've never had an entire bottle of beer. You suspect you can get pretty drunk if you drink it fast enough. Cheers. It's good. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to choke this down at all, let alone quickly. I'd say they're both impressed and repulsed by the house. The poster on Mara's door where, um, where she, where she uh, ruminates on which Blink-182 uh, member she could date. Yeah, Jason's just too pissed off to be impressed. Hey, Slugger. Is it cool that we're here? Sure, I love looking at rich people's shit. You're pretty sure Simon isn't rich. He doesn't even speak to his family, let alone rely on them financially. You can recall at least a few times Simon was too broke to eat. Still, Jason's words have you wondering, how exactly Simon does live here? Is he a more successful writer than you think? What's it cost to live here exactly? Huh? Are you mad? About what? That I'm drinking? What? Of course not. Okay. <laughs> I was worried you didn't want me doing that. It's your life, Mara. Why would it bother me what you do? I don't know, because we're kind of close these days? With the kissing and all? I don't mean like husband and wife or anything, just like more than friends. Sorry, I don't know what I'm saying. Hey, it's all right. Everything's cool, Mara. Okay? Okay. I'm gonna have a smoke outside. Can I join you? I'm actually running out of six. Oh, okay. Never mind. feel a sickness traveling through you, touching every tender nerve as it spreads. Soon your body radiates with discontent. But could she have made the right combination of moves? That is for the player and her to wonder. Quickly spiraling into a pit of anxiety, you decide to calm yourself by logging onto the internet. Yeah, that always works, right? Is Mara down with the sickness? Uh, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, okay. Staggle is online. Hey. Are you there? Hey, I'm here. It's been a while. I felt like I was being a nuisance. I'm sorry if I upset you in some way. You didn't. I've just been having a really hard time figuring stuff out lately. It's okay. I guess I'm just wondering what happened with you and me. Your face flushes at the sight of this question. It seems like Staggle is accusing you of something. We were never officially anything. I don't know where you get that idea. Dot, 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 dot. Oh, such a mean thing to say. You're so angry all of a sudden. You wish Staggle would just get the message and move on. Well, I guess I kind of suspected this. I just wish I knew where we went wrong. For a moment, it felt so easy and right. I don't know. If you reach back into your sense memory, you can still taste and smell and feel it. Spring, the time when you fell for Staggle. He meant the world to you once. He seemed like the answer. Do regret that you've lost the feeling, but you can't explain why either, and you don't want to explain it, especially not to Staggle himself. I'm on a friend's computer. I can't talk long. Okay. I'm sorry, PT. I don't want anything else from you. I'm just sad, and I don't know who else to tell. I'm sad too, and I'm sorry too. I'll leave you alone now. I hope eventually we can be friends. You can't imagine Staggle not being in your life, but at this moment, you dare not promise anything. 
By Staggle. Sam. That's my real name. Taggle is this game I made up with my best friend when we were little. Wow, all this time I thought of you as a deer. Haha. <laughs> nope. I'm Mara. PT is a reference to my home. Mara, that's cute. Sorry, sorry. Take care, Mara. Goodbye, Sam. Robert have nothing interesting to say. You okay? Dunno. You seem upset. I'm not upset, I'm just... No, it doesn't matter. Aw. I think I need to go home. Really? We just got here. You wonder what Jason expected to get out of this trip. Was he hoping to get you alone tonight? The thought fills you with disgust. Not for Jason's intentions, but for the fact that you probably would have done it. You wonder what's the matter with you, that you couldn't just be happy with Staggle, who actually wanted to be with you. Now, once again, you're adrift. I'm sorry, I really wanted you guys to visit, but I just have a lot of problems right now, and... Did I do this? No, no. Don't be sad, Mara. I don't want you to be sad. Especially not because of me. No, it's not really. I'm happy because of you. <laughs> oh, that shit hurts. The cigarettes overpower any scent of Jason himself. Your hands touch only the cold of his jacket. Even the heat of his breath on your face hits like smoke. We'll hang out soon. You probably need some time away from Jason. You probably need to say that. But any indication that he wants to see you again pierces your resolve. You remain eager for the next meeting, the next possibility. Yes, soon. Good night, Mara. All right. <laughs> yeah. You get the sense that Jason kind of needs everything to be all right all the time. He, uh, he does not do well with things not being all right. So then he probably hears things are all right very often. All right, so I had already started ranking the horniest moments in this game. Everyone's gone to bed. You can't be sure whether your absence went unnoticed or if they gave up waiting for your return. Really, between the two options, is there any difference? <laughs> All right, here we go, folks. back to the wagon. Uh, I, uh, I didn't have many opportunities to like sort of time a piece to, uh, a musical piece with Daniel to the, uh, to the, the scenes of the game, just because we were on like such a tight deadline at the end to get the game done. But that was one of the, the scenes where I was really happy to have like, um, the timing locked into place so that it could be scored that way. Um, was that scene all in her imagination? Um, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm interested in hearing. Oh, I'm going to take up my headphones.
Yeah, I love, I just love the score in that scene. I love like the changing, like the uh, the slowing um, and, and speeding of the music, of the tempo. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it is like purely in her imagination. It's not real. It's just sort of a, like a glitchy, pixelated version of the truth, which, you know, is a distortion. Um, does her family bring up why she left that day? Um, no, it's never brought up. It's just like, you know, either she's in trouble for it or her family didn't notice. Like, it's just not, it's not gotten into, but, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the outcome, she does continue to hang out with them. So they can't, they can't have found out the whole story, or at least, you know, felt like they had any control over it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, ideas can feel, uh, ideas can feel very real. They can really distort reality. Like, yeah, it's, a. Uh, it's, it is almost like it really happens. Um, all right, let me read this intro and then I will call it a night. Um, try and think when to do the next one. Hey girl. Wow. Your hair is back to normal. Yeah. I started to hate it. Oh, well I liked it both ways. Thanks. Did you hear the new Brittany? Uh, yeah. A while ago. I guess that question is overdue. You and Lily have been on good terms since you reconciled in the fall, but you still haven't technically hung out again. Now you're starting to regret the time you've lost. Do you love it? It's all right. A few good singles. Oh my God. Stronger? Eh. Oh my God, Mara. I've been playing it nonstop. It's my favorite. Maybe of all time. Isn't it the kind of, isn't it kind of just a redux of baby one more time? Sure, but that's like the point. She's back, baby. Better than ever. If you say so. Are you going out tonight? No, didn't you hear? The sound might freeze. I did hear. I was just testing you. <laughs> Mara! I was just getting supplies from my grandma for Christmas presents. There's still so much to do. Yeah, tell me about it. Panic descends as you realize Hanukkah is happening even sooner than Christmas. You'll need to think about gifts for your family. And soon. What are you getting for your mom? I was thinking of developing one of my old photos for her. I just need the school lab during break. Good luck with that. Want to hang out later? I could come over. You can hardly believe your ears. Lily wants to spend her Friday night with you? Well, she is trapped on the island after all. You're kind of her best option. Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, good, good. I didn't know if you'd want to. I'll come over after sunset, okay? See you then. Oh, Mara? Do you want my extra issue of Girl Mag? For some reason, I got two in the mail. I think you do get a Lily point for this one. Yeah, I'll take it. Great. It looks like a good one, even though James Vanderbeek's on the cover. Lots of, <laughs> lots of good food and makeup advice. You wonder if this is Lily's subtle way of saying you need to eat better and fix your face. Either way, it occurs to you that you probably need to. Thanks. See you later. Bye, Mara. All right. Uh, yes, O2.mp3, baby. I don't know if I'm going to do it on the stream. I'm a little worried about, um, um, like, Twitch detecting copyright infringement. I don't know. Um, let me... Let me answer... There might be... If you asked a question and I didn't answer it, feel free to like post it again. I'll, uh, I'll answer it before I call it a night. <laughs> yeah. Mara never feels fully comfortable in her friendship with Lily. It's a, uh, it's kind of impossible to reach that point. Are you telling me perfect tides two isn't about an alternate reality and the introduction to the per perfect tide verse? Um, when did I rule that one out? An alternate reality. Oh, right. Like 
like different possible timelines that could have taken place. I mean, I think like the thing with Mara is that there's no, like ultimately like there is a, there is a little change that you can make in like the outcome. There's a small amount of change, but on every alternate timeline of her life, she does the same shit and, and like alienates people exactly the same way. There's just no way that she doesn't do it. So, uh, I could make, you know, I could make 50 games of the same, uh, the same time period with slightly different outcomes and you would still get this game. This, this is the, uh, the multiverse of outcomes for her. Are there any branches or relationship choices in the game that I had to, uh, cut for time? Yeah. I wanted to do a little more with, um, with Staggle. Uh, but ultimately I, I didn't really see where it could happen. Um, the outcome with Staggle is pretty locked in like, you know, there's nothing you can do to prevent the way she feels. Um, and you know, so little about him that, uh, you know, as opposed to the other relationships where like, you can sort of, um, you know, show them like compassion and care. Um, it, by necessity, you kind of had to know very little about Staggle. So it just didn't feel like it didn't feel necessary. So that was the one that I, I decided didn't need to be a thing, but, but you do, you, you do still get to like write him a letter of your choice and get like a reaction of your choice. So I, I worked in like a few places where you can do it. You know, you can wait for him to IM you and, or, or, or just jump right in. Um, there are choices. They just don't lead to a different outcome. <laughs> Into the tide verse. Yeah. The, uh, the perfect tides extended, extended universe. Oh, well, I'm really, I'm, I'm glad to hear you. You, you've been affected by the game. Um, it, it is wonderful. I mean, you know, uh, most people didn't grow up on a tiny little island like this. So I, I can only hope that, um, you know, the, the figurative uh, truths resonate as well as the, the literal ones, uh, the details. Um, do I have specific people's voices in your head for characters in the game? Um, I mean, I guess they kind of sound like the way I'm saying them, which is like a lot of guys going, duh, 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 duh. And a lot of girls going, oh my God, <laughs> they all sound like me in my head. Um, you know, they're, they're all, they're all being written from my voice. <laughs> how can you describe how you view Amanda's character? She's probably the most hazy to me. feels like it's because Mara is so intimidated by her that she can't see her clearly. I mean, in general there, I, I feel like there's an unknowable quality to, to everyone in Mara's life. Um, you know, she has a limit to what she can understand about, uh, the people in her life. And Amanda doesn't, uh, really stick around long enough to, um, to really like disillusion Mara in any way. Um, she just doesn't really ever get a chance for that. So Amanda stays pretty, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, mythologically good. Like she, she stays pretty virtuous, virtuous in Mara's mind, I think. And, you know, Amanda to me is like, she's kind of like a fucked up kid. Like, uh, her, you know, her, she recently like, you know, became assimilated with a new family. Um, and she tries not to even be at home because like, it's not the life she wants. Um, so she kind of just like hangs out with, with like, you know, sort of wild kids um, she gets, she gets herself into situations and then like gets herself out of them hastily. Um, she's like, you know, she's like a, a kid that her parents probably do worry about. Um, but in Mara's mind, she's got everything figured out and, uh, you know, we don't really see Amanda agonize over her choices because she doesn't really worry about things like, you know, hitting it off with a cute boy. Like, her concerns, uh, are, uh, way more related to like, 
her future and like getting away from her family and like getting out of this like fucking town that she hates. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not really for us to see because we're seeing it through Mara's eyes. Um, will I ever return to perfect ties in comics form? I mean, if I, if I felt like I had something to say that way, um, you know, it's not always, uh, most effective to say things with a video game or most effective to say them with a comic. Um, I, I'm very grateful to have video games as like a tool in my toolbox now. Cause I, I get to think about what I could say with it. Um, in addition to what I could say with comics. So, um, it's just nice to have that possibility. Um, is Timothy written from Mars perspective as in more of a jerk than he would be in real life because she's frustrated that he's the father of the family now that her real father is dead. Well, we certainly only ever see Timothy when he's terrorizing her. We, uh, we don't see, like, I, I think later on, we only like, you know, there's, there's very few moments where we see Timothy, like contemplating his own thoughts, you know, um, we see him calling Mara to break like the news about her father. Um, and we see him feeling anguish over, a decision he makes on her behalf. Um, but for the most part, you know, we see him as a slob who's like, you know, hang, just hanging around the house being a menace, um, which is, yeah, what she sees. That's all she sees. She doesn't see him, uh, when he's in his room, she doesn't really see him when he's with his friends or if she does, she sees like, you know, just a roadblock to her own desires. She doesn't like, she doesn't particularly care what his life is like. Um, but we do, we do get like, you know, very brief glimpses. Um, there's a moment when she, uh, she's looking in his email and she realizes that he doesn't have any online friends and that he's like basically had the same friends his whole life. And she kind of senses, uh, for a moment, she allows herself to sense that like Timothy's life is very different from hers and that, you know, he's actually quite comfortable, um, where he is and like, you know, the world that he inhabits. Um, and she doesn't understand that. Um, you always thought Amanda might've been the one who started a rumor about Lily Mara. That is a fun, that is a fun theory. I, you know, I've never like personally like said either way, like whether Justin was the one to start it or not. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't like Justin is, you know, is such a, uh, an enemy in Mara's mind that like, it would be very easy to accuse him of that. But yeah, who knows? Like Amanda's, Amanda doesn't seem to, uh, you know, she, she seems to take it very lightly, even repeating a rumor like that back. Um, so like, it is a little bit menacing that she brings it up the way she does. That's, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amanda is also kind of like one of those, uh, one of those easy, easy laughs, you know? And I think that's why, um, Mara is in constant shock when she's like hanging out with her because she's like, this person's so cool. Like, is she really like laughing at all the things I say? But like Amanda is just like, you know, it's kind of just what she does. She, uh, to keep the traffic of conversation moving. She laughs at a lot of things she hears. <laughs> She's like that girl in the Weezer song. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like there are parts of this that I've written to understand other people. Um, you know, to not necessarily demonize the people that I didn't understand at a certain point. <laughs> it's true. Amanda does kind of leave the, uh, the group, um, 
you know, when she's had enough. She gets everything she wants out of it. How did the 3D scene work? Um, it was rendered completely outside of the engine. Um, AGS does not handle 3D, so um, it was it was brought in to uh, 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 you know an imaging software as like a sequence, and then sized down to pixel resolution, and uh, uh, and then imported as an image sequence into the game. Do you think Mara would be more secure in herself and her friendships as she gets older? Or do you think when she gets older, she'll continue to harbor the same insecurity? <laughs> I don't know. I guess you can ask me about that one. Um, I mean, it's, uh, uh, is anyone ever perfectly secure in themselves? Some days and some days, yes. And some days, no. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't know that anyone fully cures themselves of their neurosis, but um, certainly you learn how to recognize things like that. And if you have any sort of um, desire coupled with resource resources to um, improve your behavior and improve the uh, trajectory of those thoughts, then, you know, hopefully... A, a person who is that neurotic as a teenager would see some improvement in their, in their twenties and beyond. When, when Jackson sees Mara and Timothy fighting, he says stuff like, Oh, this is nothing. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was a mention about Amanda, that she is an incredible rebel at home. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really think about that. Um, what does Jackson say? He just says like, oh, dude, let her, let her play the game. I think like, I think, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't necessarily, um, trying to make a point about Jackson, although I guess, yeah, it could be interpreted that way, but I was really just like, you know, I was thinking of, you know, the way brothers and sisters interact, the way si siblings interact and the, the nasty shit they do to each other, um, when viewed by anybody else, um, would look, uh, really over the top, really unfair. Um, and, uh, and, and that person would not understand the stakes, uh, of that kind of an argument. So like, I think, you know, it's a, it's a moment where Timothy, uh, realizes that part of growing up, part of being the grown up that he's trying to be for his family is not just like disciplining his sister, but having like, you know, a cool head about it. Not like, not like taking out his rage on her, um, that like, it makes him look immature that he's that he's doing that in front of his friends. And he, he realizes that a little too late before his friends kind of see him in a, in an unflattering moment. <laughs> it's hard having siblings. Yeah. It, uh, it never, it never stops being complicated. I have three siblings and, uh, I know at least one of them has watched the entire Let's Play. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the other two think of the game. <laughs> I uh, I can't say I'm curious. <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little frightened to think about such things, so I try not to. How do you let your characters be so naturally imperfect and cringy? Well, thank you. That's, that's very nice. Um, I really try to get into a, like a mode. It's hard to describe. 
but you know, I've, I've done it for so long now that I can kind of feel it happening. There's this like state of, there's a state of flow that, uh, you know, as like productivity gurus call it where like, you know, I'm almost like in a trance when I'm writing where I'm kind of like, I'm kind of feeling every character as I write them. Um, <laughs> I've heard, um, I've heard like Charles Schultz talk about it. Like that, you know, whenever he would draw a character, he would, like if he was drawing Charlie Brown angry, he would be feeling it as he was drawing it. Um, and I've definitely found more and more that I'm able to access something like that. Um, it's hard writing characters you don't like. Oh, well, yeah, I, I, I love all my characters. They're, they're my, uh, they're all these tiny little facets of myself. Like even the ones who, you know, I, I would not like to resemble in any way are still like this, this ugly little kernel of myself. And if I can just access the part of me that is them or that, or that, you know, holds the memory of them, if not, you know, if not a direct resemblance. Um, <laughs> Fred is one of the characters that I'm most uncharitable with. So I suppose I'm not trying to be Fred. I, I don't think I try to embody him. Um, there's, there are exceptions to this for sure. No, well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you, uh, you feel the moments that I'm creating. I'm definitely, uh, I've definitely fine tuned, uh, the feeling that I know I'm supposed to get from something. I've, I've fine tuned my ability to like decide whether. I have, I've hit that or not, or if I'm even approaching it. Um, and I'm much, uh, I'm much better than I used to be at, uh, uh, dispensing with ideas that are not helping. Um, you know, I will, I will jettison, uh, an idea, uh, much sooner than I used to. I can, I can say, Oh, what if it, it no, like, like it, it comes and it goes very, very fast so that the, the final form of it, um, it, it finds its final form faster than, than it used to. I, I feel like I used to have to meander quite a bit more for it. Um, do I consider myself a perfectionist? Um, in, in areas, but you know, when it comes to like, uh, uh, model consistency, like, like consistency and draftsmanship, um, I've, I've given up the ghost on that one. Um, when it comes to, you know, certain details, I'm, I'm pretty exacting, but, um, it's, a I have a lot of blind, I have a lot of willful blind spots because there's simply no way to get everything done. If everything is, everything needs to be a certain way. So if it doesn't get done, then it's not perfect. It's just not done. Like it's an unfinished thing is like, is like repulsive to me. <laughs> I must finish. So, uh, perfect is, is a, is a real problem when you're trying to finish something. So I've, I've learned to prioritize. How do you feel the general character of the island through the seasons informs Mara's journey? Well, um, when things begin, there is, um, uh, it, it's all very quiet. There's nothing to do, but there's a sense that before long, something is coming. Um, and by the time the summer hits, uh, we're starting to see, we're seeing like, Mara's, Mara's, uh, frustration is reaching a boiling point. Um, she cannot, <laughs> she absolutely cannot deal with how horny she is and how desperate she is for like the world to open up to her. Um, fall, uh, how does fall represent? I, 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 I suppose, um, even though there is like um, a rising action, there is a, uh, there is also a sense of dread that things are not, uh, 
uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That things are in decline, that things are already in decline. Um, and then winter, which we'll see in the next, the next play, um, is when uh, Mara needs to learn to be alone with some of the, uh, uh, you know, the most upsetting thoughts that she has. Um, she needs to embrace that, that solitude. So, yeah, there you go. Um, I love that this game reminds me that no one, especially not those who adults praise as mature just because they were smart and obedient was as mature as they thought they were at the time. No. And I mean, most of the people in this game are not adults. Like there's a few adults, but for the most part, we're dealing with people who are maybe a little older than Mara, but they're certainly still struggling. Oh, for rewrites. Um, so yeah, I mean, I rewrote, I rewrote quite a bit. I would, um, I would play through the game and read everything every once in a while. And I would just be like, Ugh, and I'd like make a note to myself and I'd go back and like change the wording here and there. I did that quite a bit. Um, it, it kind of, you know, it, it, it was folded in nicely with play testing where I could kind of just like read and reread the story and edit the story as I went. Um, there were a lot of things that I wrote down just to be a placeholder. Um, and I, you know, as the game progressed, I started to realize I would never come back to every placeholder I'd, I'd set forth. So I tried to get it as, as good as possible in that first draft. But whenever it came to a cutscene, I would probably be rewriting that one right until the very end. I appreciate the island setting since it's both symbolic of island of the island, but also very uh, of paradise, but also very suffocating. Yeah, um, it's a uh, it's kind of like this place that like you know, even if you ever had it, you would wouldn't really be able to appreciate it in the moment. Not not fully, not and especially not at her age. What games inspired this one? Um, I mean, I, yeah, I've talked about Sierra games a lot, like King's Quest and uh, Laura Bow, like particularly the second Laura Bow game, like the mechanics of that um, and like the way the story is told um, really influenced me. Uh, Freddy Farkas, which I, I was talking about it on Twitter the other day. It's like a game where you're a pharmacist and you have to assemble like medicine uh, for people. And uh, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a comedy. So there's like a lot of opportunity for, for goofiness. Um, but, uh, I, I kind of took the photography development mechanic from like directly from Freddy Farkas. Um, yeah, I just, I love, I love the idea of like a second person narrative that speaks back to you in sort of a cruel way, in sort of a mocking way. Um, and that seemed perfect for, uh, you know, a teenager who's just talking to herself. Um, yeah. Were you wary of Mara stealing too many items? I think she only steals like three things. <laughs> I definitely thought about like, what is it realistic for Mara to take? Um, and realistically, she's not a person who would steal, like, like she's very scared whenever she takes things. Um, so I tried to always like, you know, represent that. That's funny that you counted how many things she steals. Oh yes. Freddy the fish. I played, I played a little of that and like pajama Sam. I was a little too old for those games. It was mostly like over my little brother and sister's sh shoulder watching that game. But yeah, the, um, the kind of like 2D cartoon look where it wasn't like pixelated characters. It was like more like just like an MS Paint drawing. Um, I definitely had a lot of cutscenes in this game like that from like that later era of point and click. Man, 
man. This, like, these last couple of weeks, I haven't talked this much in so long. I, um, I went to, like, like, I, I had, like, all these trips back to back where I, like, I saw friends and, like, just, like, talked to people for days. And then I did this stream uh, twice now. And, like, I've lost my voice quite a few times over the last couple of weeks. Um, it, it has been life affirming to, like, see my friends and talk so much. Um, but I am feeling... I'm feeling such a strain on my voice at this point. Um, yeah, those games are really cute. My 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 little brother really liked Putt Putt. That was that was pretty adorable. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Um, it's uh it's very nice talking to you guys. Um, any more quick ones before I go? I think the next game, uh, the next playthrough will be let me look at let me pull up my calendar i'm leaving town on friday until monday so i could probably do the last one well it's that's gonna happen i wanted to do it before the steam cell was over should i just do it tomorrow and get it done with maybe I'm going to think about it. I'm going to sleep on it and we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll finish it up tomorrow night. <laughs> yes. These streams will be watched, uh, watchable later. I am recording them and they're also going to be like on uh, video on demand on Twitch um, for, you know, the amount of time that, uh, that they can be. Oh, well, it, it has been a pleasure guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, favorite Dragon Ball character. Uh, <laughs> Goku. <laughs> I've never had strong opinions about Dragon Ball. I just kind of let it wash over me. You know, it's just beautiful. <laughs> okay. Part three coming either tomorrow or a week from now, I think. So I will, I will update. I will update on like Twitter in the morning. 17 minutes. Yes, please. And you should record it too. I really want to see. Um, I would be so impressed to see a speed run of 17 minutes. All right. Bye everyone.